The NECC may have been gone for a while, but we hope you've all enjoyed your winter breaks. But we're back in action, and we're starting things off here on the A-Stream with me and Phrenosis alongside my good friend Mick. And we've got ourselves two teams ready and raring to go to start things off for week one here. Yeah, both friends from up north as we're taking our way up to Canada here today, but it's not the map pool that's really matching up the entire vibe of these two teams. We're not even looking at Icebox, even though that's kind of where they would feel themselves probably to be at home, but as it stands right now, at least in terms of standings, there isn't anything to go by, which is obviously the fact of the matter, consider that we're just now starting the season, but we're going to the Champions Division, funny enough. So we're going ahead and getting a very, very good taste of what probably the best of the best could really provide in terms of the season, considering that... It's not like last semester, keep in mind. We're not going ahead and coming to an abrupt conclusion of saying, wow, you won your division. We have nationals that are going to go on as well. So every single little bit of the meta, every single agent that comes into the pool, and every single kind of rotation adjustment that we made is going to be much more impactful considering that, well, you're going up against everybody when it's all said and done. Speaking of going up against, we're actually going to talk about the teams that are going up against each other first and foremost. We got St. Clair Saints, the varsity side, facing off against the champions Ontario side of Carlton Ravens. And when you're talking about champs in the NECC, there's so many different divisions just within champs alone. Yep. Got to make sure we know that it is those Canadian brethren up top, the Ontario side. You look at the schedule over on the left. We had a little bit of an issue for scheduling for that first game. Dallas, I'm sure you can maybe guess why that happened, just seeing the two teams that are up there. It's a big joke. We're both alums over from the UNA Purple side, but they were supposed to be facing off. They didn't get their first game in on time, so we had St. Clair Saints with the Carlton Ravens second, and our third match you'll see here, technically now our second match, that'll come up right after this one will be the UBC Black versus Boise State. Yeah, a little bit of the smaller stream going on here, but that doesn't really go ahead and take away from the fact what we got going ahead and being laid out. Obviously, same kind of situation. I know that the UNA game and Arkansas game actually took place on Arkansas's channel, so if you are obviously very into that kind of scene and need to know every single last detail of these players and every single kill to keep track of, I mean, there's a place for it somewhere here on the internet. But right here, right now, this is the matchup we're concerned with, and even more so, the map pool. That's something you already mentioned. It's something that obviously is going to have a little bit of influence, but I mean, go ahead and take us to a little bit of a tour of where we're going to be going today. Screens Dallas. One of the more things that we've been talking about, especially during the break, when we're talking about, hey, what's new in the scene? What's going on? Map changes galore. We no longer have to deal with bind. We still don't know why that little video is going on in there. We've got to update, bring Lotus into the foray. But it was ban, ban, pick, pick, ban, ban, pick. Split and fracture it off the board first, followed with Ascent and Haven to be picked up. That's none too shocking. The one thing that could be seen as a bit of a shock was the fact that Pearl got picked up or kind of left out, I guess you could say, as that decider. So should a third map be necessitized, Pearl will be where we're heading to, which is no longer the newest map. So to say, in fact, you would maybe consider two maps to be the newest. No. The split has had some pretty heavy changes, and a lot of people haven't played that for a long time in the competitive scene. And then obviously Lotus, which has just come in. Yeah, and oddly enough, I mean, you went ahead and mentioned map number three, talking about Lotus. I'm going to go to the opposite side of the spectrum and go ahead and start with this first map. That's the thing that really pokes out to me, because I don't understand when these teams are going to get enough of an idea to run through their head to say, look, everybody knows a sin. Why do you think you know it better than somebody else? Well, St. Clair, they got something to prove here for map one if they really want to have themselves a good lead in this series, better yet. But even then, more importantly, not waste a map pick and possibly learn that lesson for the rest of the season because I've said it again and again and again. It deserves to be a gentleman's agreement map. It needs to be at the end of the series, just kind of left there because who's going to ban it? Absolutely nobody. But better yet, you got to be crazy enough to pick it. Yeah, right? Everyone knows the map. So who's to say you know it better? Who's to say you know it best? And this could be one that, you know, sours in their face, Dallas. So we'll have to see if it will necessarily turn out. But we are in the champions division. So you could say, hey, they should be a very solid team on that map. But every team is going to be solid on that map. This is champions division. We're not here in the lowest division yeah. in the NECC of teams that are, you know, just beginning their journey of working through those divisions here in the NECC. These are teams that belong here. They're, they're teams that have worked to the stage and they have been putting up major fights, so to say, with every other school that happens to be here. This will be a tough matchup and starting off in a very gentleman's agreement map like that could be a tone setter. And if they happen to lose that one, a team that loses their first map pick, yeah, it may be the collegiate special to, you know, win your map pick, or sorry, win your opponent's map pick and lose yours. A sense one that if you lose it, doesn't set the best kind of tempo or pace for you, and it really throws the mental down a drain. Yeah, I mean, it's not only just a start for the series, but for the entire season, right? I mean, you yeah. don't want to have that bad start. I mean, when you look at Ascent, it's that your favorite pair of shoes that you just know every time you put them on, it's going to make your day. 
The problem is, if this time around, if things get messed up, it's like putting on your favorite shoes and next thing you know, there's there's an entire pile of worms or a snake in your boot or whatnot. It's just something that you do not want to have under any circumstances. And St. Clair may be signing up for it. We're not quite sure yet, but even more so, I'm going to go ahead and discuss a little bit more on the types of compositions we could see. Considering that obviously there's been a lot of shifts there in the offseason, not too much just besides the map pool, but we've seen a little bit more of a resurrection, I'd say, in Harbor because he had a little bit of kind of whispers occurring in the scene to say, well, new controllers, every time a new controller gets brought out, he's busted, right? They're always disgusting. Problem is, I mean, yeah, that's right. Think about Astra and her introduction to the scene. Absolutely a problem, if anything. But Harbor hasn't really had that same impact. And I think it's one of those kind of jet sicknesses we've seen again to where think about it during the beta of valorant or during the alpha jet was seen as a little bit mm, taboo but once you got into the game and once you actually got into those regular matches where everybody got a chance to feel her out said you know what this girl's kind of great when we really break it down as we're already seeing her at least on one side of the field point out we didn't have a screen for lotus but my goodness we've got a new fancy screen for agent select here dallas something new and pretty in the collegiate scene that's nice to see but we're going to talk about what we're seeing on the board the astra for jack lore rubski is going to be bringing in that fade we have the race for risen rayano is using well as best they can a breach and then you got niner of on the ko it's near a mirror matchup for at least your ko and having to deal with the fact that yeah you have to have a raise for both sides but it's not being brought out for the Saints. Instead, they're saying tried and true. They want to go to that jet you were mentioning before. We have the Silva. A very standard kind of lineup. Something that's yeah. what I would consider to be traditional Dallas. Something that you would have seen a year and a half ago, a little bit longer. Not really bringing in too much of the new, so to say, of bringing in Rays instead of your jet. Of having that Breach instead of maybe having that Omen or Silva for that Intel. All of that is there. But I feel like the newer lineup from the Carlton Ravens, that kind of new style of having Fade and Breach and KO... On, and raise on this map will help them a lot more when it comes to their attacks and their defense where they're starting off first. And I gotta say, I mean, the tried and true when it comes around to St. Clair, I'm just kind of on that side of the field as well. When you look at what they're providing and even in the fade, sure, it's good, it's new, it's sparkly, it's shiny to look at. Problem is, though, that breach, you just don't have enough information. You have a little bit of an entry, but KO does literally everything. And sure, you have that there to really back it up, but St. Clair, they have a lot more pushing power with that jet there to follow things up, and she doesn't really have too much of a risk and has an eco play as well. Problem is, eco isn't in issue right now pistols are in everybody's hands you just gotta hit those shots and we're seeing some pretty even trades in that regard rubski was caught out in the back of boathouse a player on site and then two swinging in from walkway catch them unaware and then evens the odds for a three on three niners looking to take down walkway themselves pop flashes over the top the jet of endeavors close they'll remaining. lose their head but not before finding one more jack lore two from the staircase side as Mzuwu and Q had no idea what they were capable of doing there, and the Carlton Ravens defensively will manage to now go for the post land and find themselves victorious here in round one with a very even spread, which leaves all of the players plenty capable of buying up for this kind of four second round to go into the SMGs. Yeah, and this is where we really get to possibly see somewhat of a shift. We're not going to see it in this round specifically, but, I, but I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of a, a, a sneak peek of what we could possibly see here in these next couple maps when we do get around to that map two and three is, well, hey, you know what? You beat me to it, St. Clair. The Stinger, the absolute MVP of the game that we have right now in this current meta because the gun is just too darn good that Riot doesn't know what to do with it. They're trying some things out in the PVE, but I'm not going to break down those numbers because they're not in the game just yet. We instead have to see the impact of these guns because, man, you're just trying to play for ones, right? You're trying to go one for one or get that first blood and then pick them another weapon to say, hey, a free little upgrade to work with. Well, the Stinger is the perfect gun to do that because the range on it is absolutely absurd for the RPM behind it. Keep in mind as well, it's fairly cheap. So yep. even if St. Clair happen to lose this round, they're still fairly solid and set up for round three in the Carlton Ravens losing majority of their weapons in these you know stinger one-on-one -on -one battles you were mentioning just moments prior will unfortunately put them in a spot where they're not sure how much they can force or really buy up for round three rubski though doing a wonderful job as endeavor who was already tagged through the wall just moments prior at the beginning of the round able to take down two in the process saint Clair, saints varsity side just two players left standing the stinger force has not warranted um, enough success here das which is a very unfortunate thing to say especially with how ecstatic you were about saying that stinger kind of 
uh, I guess, engagement go forward. They're just not making the most of the weapon at hand, and because of that, they're just not really finding a way into sight. It's a little bit of a testament to their play style. I mean, well, I mean, just look at the likes of these blue Xers or these red Xs, excuse me, on that mini map and see where they're pushing up the map. They're barely doing it. They're afraid to press that W key. And I mean, honestly, you can't blame them when you know the guns that you're up against. But quite honestly, when you have a stinger in hand, let's think about what you're doing. You're not thinking, right? You're just pressing the W key. You're shoving the barrel into their face and you're pulling the trigger because, well, uh, it, honestly, that gun shoots faster than Eminem can rap quite frankly. So you have to make sure that you just get that gun as close to somebody as possible and make sure to beat them before they can even think on their toes. And we just didn't see that out of St. Clair. We didn't see that aggression. And that's going to be something we have to keep our eyes on here for the rest of these couple rounds, considering that, yo, you're on the attacking side here. You got to build up that confidence. You got to start pressing that key. We got to start seeing some executions. And better yet, let's see some defaults as well, because we've hit B for both the starter rounds to be expected. Let's see what you do with some middle map control and maybe a little bit of an A hit here and there. Yeah, well, here comes the unfortunate, I guess, inevitability that is St. Clair's force in round two with the Stingers. They have nothing to bring to the table here in round three, and with the flawless round that the Carlton Ravens just brought prior, they should more likely than not have no trouble dealing with the limited arsenal they had brought in with their force, the St. Clair side, who's, I guess, pulling up their best Cassidy impersonation from Overwatch 2. A bunch of sheriffs. Imuzu has a classic. There was a marshal on the board. I can only assume is in the hands of Endeavor. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry. No, it's Q. The Sova inside of St. Clair. They're in a very tough situation. Tagged already. 62 HP. Trying to push in through bottom. And there just is not the space to do so. The Rays on the side of Carlton Ravens just slowly zoning them away. And without that insanely fast RPM you were mentioning before of those stingers where they could no brain it, so to say, like you say, like you joked about previously of just rushing in. They don't have that option here. The sheriff, oh. you gotta aim that thing tight. It is a very easy miss. And they cannot miss all the opportunities that Carlton Ravens will have to give. We're talking about sprays. We do have a couple of that over there towards the side of the tree, trying to hold things down towards the A side, because once again, St. Clair, they are being very, very hesitant in their approach onto his side. But hey, you go ahead, you get your entry, your duelist did their job. Now the rest of the team, it's your turn to pick up the torch and make sure to carry it to the finish line. But is that going to get done? Some good little holds. The spike is trying to go down. Is it really maintained just yet? And with eight seconds remaining, you could go ahead and make a swing all the times you want to in the world, but that's not going to be the case. Look for a retake. You know if you're the Carlton Ravens, you have the advantage when it comes around to these guns. Problem is, sheriffs, they're just as much of a one tap to the head as the Vandal is once you get close to them. That's what you got to be looking out for. Carlton Ravens, though, quickly diving towards Site Riono from up and Raptors has a little bit of assistance from Risen, takes them down one more, and hell gets sit there too. Wonderful flick over with the Bulldog, and that's the danger you got to be worried about if you're St. Clair Saints. Yeah, you took down two players with rifles and hands on Site, but one of them only had a Spectre. How are you going to deal with that when you can't even get them off of Raptors? They dive into you. They pick the tempo at which to fight. And the Carlton Ravens did it in an expedited way and caught them off guard. They returned more towards tree because they split the push 2-1 and it works. Carlton Ravens now a 3-0 and start. And honestly, I think they're pretty thankful for losing three out of the five of their players in that yep. last round. They no longer have any reason to save those puny bulldogs and specters they had just previously. Their rifle <laughs> buy up and everyone will at least have a rifle. Don't talk down to the bulldog like that, man. All okay, right, listen, let's, listen. let's 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 be reasonable here. Hey, I mean it's it's a good rifle and it gets the job done. Yeah. I mean, sure, I like to prefer guardians every now and then because it's just that much of a vandal. It's like you're expecting to hit that first shot to the head, and the guardian actually has a better first shot accuracy, all things considered. But the thing it comes down to right now is accuracy actually on the site. These close quarter engagements, you see a very fast push onto the A site, but it's not really warranted too much when you see the four tapping. And M's is also overextending. So you mentioned those guns start to come out into full force here for St. Clair, and it's just not doing Sorry. enough. But Carlton is snapping back. It doesn't matter. Rihanna. You gotta kill your target. Endeavor should not have been alive. Living with what I assume was about 11 HP in total, you had two clear seconds to take down your target. And now the Carlton Ravens will face their first round loss. At the back of a start that left them on a 4v2, yeah. they squandered it. And St. Clair Saints find themselves a very successful front. Problem is, they still don't necessarily have, I guess, the most credits lining their pockets. Endeavor doesn't have enough to get a rifle bought for them from either of their teammates or themselves. But they have a blade storm. I'm sure they're not too worried about it. So go ahead and pop it here. They're trying to spray down the turdy of the set of Carlton Ravens. That information is no longer available for the St. Clair Saints. 
and they'll have to think twice. The Carlton Ravens, though, they seemingly had plenty of credits off the back of that 3-0 start. They should still have at least Bulldogs and Rifles in their hands, and they're going to play Here. a lot safer after that first initial push to clear that turret and get intel. Yeah, Carlton with a chronic case of confidence here. I mean, when you go ahead and see and look what they're doing in that last round, I mean, you found that first blood, as you mentioned, and it was great. I mean, your Astro found it, of all people. I mean, that's a player that you can't really typically trade yourself out too much, but instead says, honestly, I'm just going to keep pushing. You're not a duelist. Back up, back up. That's not your job. But hey, I mean, go ahead and give me your best shot because we're talking about duelists. There's Endeavor on the side trying to nail those plays, but can only get one. Hey, one is good. It's an even trade. Something that Tinkler's side hasn't necessarily had the best of luck with so far in this game. Amazing fragment talked by Mzuo. Takes down Jack Lore. Rubsky over on that B side. It will take one more for their own. Unfortunately, falls in the process, but Risen gets the refrag back and now even the odds in a two on two it seemed like an a push was inevitable from the saint Clair side but a cheeky switch up and now they're heading on over towards b mm. and zuo swings in through bottom finds rivson and mark and rayano is forced to go for the refrag just rayano left standing they secured the refrag on a they've now done it in mid and they've got to do it on b in the one on one are they capable working in from walkway in dallas they've got plenty of time seeming that the player in the back of boathouse is just biding their time for the kill congratulations you have played your ones but not to the perfect extent where you're actually making sure to get these trades off you went ahead and saw a little bit of a head there a tiny bit of red but it even does you better when that's the blood of your opponent going ahead and spilling there for another round of work with. So Carl today, come out there on top. Once again, another defensive round. To be expected after that last one, a little bit of a fumble, I'd say, in terms of the man advantage and kind of playing that to your advantage. But, I mean, hey, they make sure to bounce back here, getting a fourth round now to work with. I was kind of expecting this 4-1 lineup. Not exactly in this order, though, but all things said and done, you still see the money spread across everybody. And even then, a little bit of a forced buy having to come out from Carlton as a consequence for their actions saying hey what exactly is going on here i mean zero 50 50 we are supposed to be able to trade these things out we're supposed to look good here well you better win yourself another good one because with all the half warmers on the field it's pretty plausible well it's all about pulling off what seems like an improbability and so there's a team capable of doing it it's any team in the champions division dallas i mentioned it before they paved their way here, and they're looking to stay there as well. For the St. Clair Saints side, looks like they're preening up towards the A site. All five stacked up inside main. Looking to swing over towards that winery and maybe pick up that ult orb in the process. They only have one player that could truly use it, and they're going to wait for it for the time being. No command's been popped by St. Clair. Essentially, a run it back as they push oh. towards site with a little bit of extra util on top. A double swing. One for the front of Endeavor in the flank from Inzuo. Oh. Niner tries to swing out, and Q cuts them off, and that was almost taken down as well. An in shocking affair for the Carlton Ravens as this A site is entirely taken and it was only needing one true ultimate to get you the job done, but they've used two to try to get a flanking spot deeper towards site. I mean, might as well. I mean, right? Go ahead. I mean, you got two feet to walk. Might as well have two ultimates to get on the site. I mean, in that that point, you were starting to run here, but not as much of a running start there. We're trying to blast back out of heaven. Not too much of a result either, but hey, still a 1v2 situation. This is doable. Let's just not run into a VCT turret situation. That's not the case. St. Clair close things out, get themselves another round to work with, and then make sure to bring this game back. That is the second time Rihanna has swung that exact same angle. Theoretically gotten the drop on their opponent. I, I would say they say they had them dead to rights there and just couldn't close out for the kill. This one a lot less embarrassing, I would say, than the one previously, where they tried to swing him from the flank and it didn't work out, but I mean still, Rayano did everything they could. They clutched out the round before, can't really dog on them. They have their ultimate ready, and I think that's one of the more important things we'll look towards in this round. Four ultimates off the board for St. Clair. Three in the last round alone. Not sure why they used the from the shadows there. I didn't think that was the uh, most needed choice, but it's also an ultimate that you're not necessarily uh, hounding for round after round Dallas. It's not the end all be all. So using it to get down into hell on a site, allowing for an assistance to the flank that was already there from your two players deep on site may have been the right idea. Rubsky, though, may not have the right idea. Classic in hand, already spotted by the turret, quite aggressive. Will step up with their teammates. That's their raise next door. They'll grab that ult orb. They want to make sure they get that charged up, especially after the last round where... To be fair, that showstopper did not find any impact as they boost packed out, pulled out the, the gun, yeah. pulled out the Roomba, pulled out the gun again, tried to pull out the showstopper, and just got killed in the process. 
I think uh, they prefer if we just didn't talk about that anymore, and I'll just go ahead and leave it to the past. I'll let the players learn their own mistakes. But, I mean, right now you can see as everybody, they're trying more just to put in some emphasis on learning where the players are right now because we've seen these defaults over and over and over again. You know Fate's playing towards B. You know KO's playing towards A, but everybody else is kind of getting a little bit dancy on their feet here. Can't really come up with the decision in their own mind to say where should we be playing the site, but honestly, they, the 50-50 was one out. You have more players towards B, but you don't have the guns to back it up. But you still make somewhat of a trade there. Ooh. Rihanna actually finds two. Niner with a stinger able to take down oh. Stefan has just risen left standing. So much potential here. Mzuwu is already dropped down to 76 HP. Oh! And the Vandalist Collected saves the Carlton Ravens who fly high. Five and two now your scoreline. A glorious thrifty round win coming out. And I'll be frank, that may just be an eco straight up because they're rocking basically only classics and a couple yep. of sheriffs. Don't even want to call it a, a semi buy. That was them pulling up the bootstraps and getting the job done. And the crazy thing about it, he, even then, off the back of that round, you still don't see the highest economy in the world for these players on the side of Carlton. But they have four ultimates to work with. That is the safety net that you have given yourself in this game. So quite simply, sure, in a round like this, you see a lot of frenzies. You see the stinger. And, I mean, Carlton aren't going to be the ones to see that. But regardless, St. Clair, they have just as much of an opportunity. But keep in mind, these guns, they still excel in close range. You have to press these W buttons. And you got to make sure to break your key switches in the meantime trying to get there. So you need to make sure while you're closing out this gap that you have somewhat of an execution, a game plan. Problem is, a little bit of a halt comes through there with Honor's Fury being brought out. Get some damage downfield, but endeavor make sure that it's still worth it at the end of the day. And one more player trapped down in hell. This may be the worst case scenario there for Jack Lorf, and in fact, it will come true. Rivson's trying to work in from Puppy. Does get the drop on him, Zuwu, but somehow, what? some way, the frenzy flicks and kills before there's any chance of a refrag back. Rubski's forced to go for the one-on-one -on -one trade, and while it did seem like there was nary a chance to take down the Sova in the side of St. Clair, denied. Quick hop and a skip through door after that pulling the switch, and that'll be all she wrote. Wonderful play alongside the Shock Dart, forcing Rayano to maybe take, take a couple steps back. That allows for a quick and aggressive swing, and then Q with a long shot through to avenge as Rubski, who was the last player left for Carlton Ravens, falls to the floor. Losing the odds a little bit closer, just a two-round disparity between them, and the Carlton Ravens are stuck in another round where they didn't have much money last round, like you said. They definitely don't have that much money this time. <laughs> God, at this point, I mean, two back-to-back -back thrifties don't even buy. Quite simply, St. Clair's throwing this game by buying full rifles at this point is what it seems like. I mean, considering the amount of power that goes behind the Frenzy and the Stinger and the Marshal, just seeing what those guns can do, it, it feels like every single weapon that's under $1,000 apparently is already compensated by the amount of damage it does. And even then, spending $2,900, doing nothing but buying a bunch of Blast X guns that actually legitimately shoot nerf darts in-game. <laughs> I think we should just do that across the board, quite simply. Not because I've been waiting a year for the Blast X fan to come to my shop again, but because... It just feels like they don't really do what they're supposed to. But we need to see still a little bit of these ultimates and the economy of that going to the side of Carlson to keep in mind. So St. Clair, they've had themselves an outstanding effort thus far and they're making sure to get some really clean trades, especially when Q's doing stuff like that. Hunter's Fury, it's on the gun. Q. 4K, Vandal, already. What was once a three clears out the player hiding in pizza, and unfortunately, that was their last meal on death's row, leaving just Rubski left standing. I like that start, to be fair. Rivzen swinging in. They put up the smoke at top mid. They try to go over towards Link. They realize nobody's swinging me. I gave up the intel on the first wide swing. I'll take a couple steps back before that you know, astral smoke dissipates on top mid, and then I'll just play for the mid placement and then... They went for the engagement, and they inevitably lost it. Only two kills by Ribs in themselves, and at least just Rubski now all by themselves. They do have a pretty solid weapon in their hand, but you're asking a 3v1, and you've got the turret for intel. You've got a player easily swinging you down, and St. Clair Saints say, we'll feed the beast. Q now an ace in this round, and it's not with a cheap weapon, a $1,000 weapon, Dallas. It's with a real try and true rifle. Yeah, some players are just a little bit too hot to handle, and even then, you got to go ahead and make a conclusive decision on what kind of fire it is. And my, nine times out of ten, it's just your typical fire. Problem is an electrical fire. When you got shock darts there in the back little satchel, the quiver, it's, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to take those out. And Q definitely went ahead and made a testament of that to show that even then, what could also be a fire is your scoreline if you keep this thing going. 
Two rounds now back to back here for St. Clair. And even then, full ultimates for Carlton. I keep talking about them because I'm hoping I can scream loud enough for them to understand that, yo, that button is there for a reason. You got to press it eventually because there is only three rounds remaining inside of this half. And you can't save them all for one exact point to pop at the same time because those buttons are not cop-outs. They are setups. They are opportunities. They are windows that you create. We'll have to pounce in those windows, Dallas. It doesn't matter how many opportunities you created. The players themselves aren't capable of closing out that engagement. Carlton Ravens. Looks like we may be stuck in a bit of a, I guess, hectic affair. Old Torp collected for St. Clair's inside B main and a little bit of intel. The audio cue there. It forces Rivzin to go ahead and relocate themselves backwards. And instead of actually going for the, I don't know, play back through defensive spawn through that arch's side, they're going to actually swing in through V-Main and get quite aggressive. An interesting decision, but you have the Roomba to follow behind. It's like flashing for yourself before moving forward. At least gives you some sort of sightline removal. So it will be forced to look down upon the Roomba to clear it first and foremost. Rubski tosses you to around the corner. Showstoppers out and unfortunately... St. Clair Saints got some pep in their step, and they retreat just in time with no problems. Nightfall hot, oh. and it's a great way to open up for two kills for the Carlton Ravens, only just now losing one to Q. Yeah, perfect setup there with that Nightfall to go ahead and get that little decay to kick in for that one health. So even if the bullet didn't hit, that blast shell was going to find that kill, but problem is there's plenty more players around the map to go ahead and kill. But they're all in the back of sight, and they're waiting for you to put this fight down, and it just seems like St. Clair doesn't want to do that. Five seconds remaining. You got to swing. At least get that one kill on the player that matters, and you just can't find it. 1v3 situation. It all comes down to Jack, and, well, there's just no turning back. Another one to go in the way of St. Clair. An ultimate now to work with in that Hunter's Fear out of Q to be expected after that ace there two rounds ago. And after, once again, as I mentioned, a lot of ultimates for Carlton, but they're not cop-outs because after you pop three in that last round, you still end up losing it. Every time we've seen St. Clair Saints have three on site in a post plant, they have not lost that objective. The Carlton Ravens have struggled against those numbers on site. 1v1, Carlton Ravens would clutch it out with Rayana just using a bit of util to clear the player and back up Outhouse. Two players for an even two on two. It was initially a four on two, but we won't talk about that one. They, they get at least close. It's not like a, a very disparaging round for them. But three players on site, it is a total lopsided affair for St. Clair Saints. They have no problem dealing with the difficulties at the end. Carlton Ravens need a much better strategy on site, and they just truly haven't been able to find that sort of leeway. And this round looks like it may just be the exact same case you finding two picks Let's right off the bat st Clair saints just cutting down the two players that were looking to aggress in b main and it seems inevitable that the third will follow up quickly it. after the fact there's that stinger Dude, with that what? range you mentioned previously jack Lorf instantaneously takes down him zero but finally four tap and will remove them as they try to swing in through link yeah um i mean spike. i'm not gonna say gg saints but i mean that's a this is a four v one round right now carlton didn't really have the best sense in terms of weaponry i mean they're on an eco so you really can't go ahead and bash them too much for a round like this but even then i mean their holds on the site was a little bit mm, debatable to say the least so already some good pushes go ahead over it sent out from the site so you can get that rifle out of that player's hand and that's exactly what you do so good looks here for saint Clair. they go into the last round of the half Will now guarantee themselves a six so no matter what worst case situation a tie half going into the latter end of this map but even better yet full guns be playing with you just stack up on that economy you work with the ultimates that you have and see what you can get done right here to close yourself out of seven well if you tie things up six six then you head into the second half and carlton ravens their team is very well set up for that attack yeah they don't have necessarily the same swiftness as st Clair with that jet and the cloud burst and the safety net that it provides of having that you know personal smoke alongside the rest of the team's kit as well but you have an astro you don't need to worry about that when you have so much potential in your controller's kit that it's not that big of a concern jack lorf on site doing a little bit of a jump peek behind the ready night crate why choosing not to do it behind the brick one that's not actually bangable? I'm not sure, but they'll take a lot of damage in the process. Oh, well, Thankfully, dishing on. some back, dropping Endeavor, that jet I mentioned previously, the 70 HP. But now you're going to see the rest of these ultimates that are trickling out here and there start to go forward. A Hunter's Fury popped by Q, and there really wasn't that much intel behind it. And because of it, not really anything found. I mean, honestly, it just feels like you kind of have to pop Hunter's Fury without information at this point we've seen that yeah. so many times now apparently we're out of the loop and there's this new kind of players union going on to where it's just kind of a necessity 
I'm not quite sure where that paperwork's at. I'd like to at least read over it before I go ahead and keep on bashing players for those executive decisions. But hey, you're in the game, not me. But what's in the game right now? Cause it divide. These ultimates finally coming through here for Carlton. Looking to go ahead and create somewhat of a stall here for the B side. Ooh. And Jack does exactly that on a collateral, man! Finds a third left. as well. Jack's at 19 HP. An abysmally low quantity and still finds three picks. A double kill right off the bat. I think it might have been a collab, but we didn't see that kind of yeah, that double penetration. impact potential. But it was instantly. It was instant. So it had to have been the first two bullets out the gun, which is an insane thing to see. They get a rolling thunder to assist Jack Wolf on sight. Endeavor's only chance was to take them down, but they're stunned. They can't get enough shots out the gun, and that just lets Jack Wolf find a third before finally falling. The impact one player can find with such a little amount of HP changed the game for the Carlton Ravens and allowed for them to tie things up 6-6. I'd like to have seen that ultimate a little bit sooner. I think Rayonu quite literally only used it once in that entire half, and that's just not the best case scenario, especially when Rayano was doing so well at the beginning of the game and was a very consistent figure for those retakes and those good clutch rounds. Yeah, I mean, and even then, I mean, sure, you were on the defensive side of the map, right? You have to stay alive for the retake. Know that you can set that up and have enough players to warrant to pop it on the retake. It's a very, very awkward set of shoes that Breaches wear. So, I mean, you really can't go ahead and give them too much flack for what they do. Uh, we can just go ahead and give a little bit more of a testament in that last round to Jack Lore from what they did. Because I don't play too much CS. I don't really know the whole history behind it, but... I mean, we don't see too much of, like, a Bogdan thing anymore. Like, Bogdan's Law, you know, obviously your one tap, give them a certain weapon or whatnot, even that. We don't see a lot of players usually accomplishing too much when they're in that one tap kind of threshold. Well, it's situations like that if actually jiggle peeking, actually playing around the surfaces, making sure you can get these shots out, seeing what you can really manage, and kind of how tricky you can get in the meantime. So talking about tricks up the sleeve, a full wraparound is coming out from the side of St. Clair trying to get this defense to really stick down this first one. I feel like the lower your HP is, the cheekier you have to be. And that's yeah. kind of what happened there for the Carlton Ravens. Interesting idea brought out from the very beginning of Rumski. They managed to at least find one pick. Not able to take down a second, but the rest of the team has seemingly done at least even standards when it comes to actually holding on to that site. One player up in Rafters quickly dealt with by Rayano, and then Jack Lover sitting in the back of the site finds yet another. A wonderful play by the Carlton Ravens to hold on to that post-plant scenario. Much better usage of that speed of the pistols that you get in round one of just taking a site very quickly. It caught St. Clair Saints off guard, and then they were put in a very rough spot of trying to retake a site from basically just a main, and then a little bit of a straggler from Rafters, and I was just closed out by the Carlton Ravens. I mean, looking at the round, like, right now, and seeing what's being set up off that. You're still a little bit confused. I mean, we don't see the Stingers being brought out. We don't see any kind of odd buys, maybe a shorty and a sheriff, but because you're confident. But looking at approaches of sight and seeing the defaults, I'm liking this for round two. Get some information, see where the players are sitting, and then carry that over in the next one instead of just running it down and guaranteeing a round. Use that advantage while you have it and try to manipulate that fact. I feel like A-Main is the best choice right now for the Carlton Ravens, and I'll, I'll give a little bit of an explanation for why. Knowing a Sheriff was initially holding the arches, you've already used the Roomba, a boost pack swinging it over the top, and the fact that you have the SMGs for this Obscuring round. I'm assuming that their race has an SMG. That allows me to close that distance exceptionally well. And yeah, well, it is a, a mini game of skeet shooting for the side of St. Clair. You have two players, one moving from bottom, one moving from top. That would have been a free kill right off the bat. And unfortunately, you don't get that same sort of chance here on site. You trade even for the first blood. Jack Lorf does find themselves a nice pick as soon as the door switch gets pulled. And while there was an opportunity maybe for St. Clair to find a little bit of impact after the fact onto that ray, uh, KO, it doesn't work out because the door catches them off guard first and foremost. Can't squeeze the shot into the foot. And as they try to swing from that Raptor side, they lose a player. Leaving them with just two. Hurtson around the corner mm. tries to go for the classic right-click law free gun kill. And unfortunately just doesn't find the safety space to do so. And now it will be an even worse situation okay. for their team to work from. Mzuwa with a nasty flick to Rubski, though. Does give them a little bit of leeway. But I mean, Jack Lewis just, you need this player. Three, nope. four kills at the end of the last round of that first half. Three kills here in the second round of the second half. This is the player to lock onto. Yeah, Q may have 17 kills at this point, but Jack Lover's catching up and catching up fast. Yeah, and even then, I mean, 
Look at that collective effort from the team as well. The majority of them are just as positive as Jack is. I mean, sure, it's not to the same exact ratio, but Rayano, a player that you mentioned specifically, oddly enough, has the least amount of deaths in the game. Has literally just as much deaths as the exact rounds that Carlton Raven does, meaning that their survivability rate for the rounds one is 100% so far. That is amazing. That's the kind of things you have to have. These players that even if they don't really contribute all the things in the world and, oh, they're not popping the Rolling Thunder immediately when they get it up, they're still saving money. They're saving their own guns, playing their own lives, carrying it over to say, look, I'm going to be Mother Teresa for the next one to give these guns away, give other people an opportunity to shoot some bullets as well, get some lead in these heads. And that's exactly what's going on this A site already. As you can see some exchanges, you know that St. Clair had better guns, so you can't really freak out about it. But Carlton's making oh, things expensive. You talked about Rayano surviving, and you also mentioned at the end of that first half, that player needs to stay alive to actually make full use of their kit and the util they have. They have been, and that's why we've seen Rayano be such a pivotal figure for the Carlton Ravens. However, look who's alive. It's Jack Lord. If you wanted any sort of clutch god scenario, it would be this player right here, the Astra. Spectre in hand, unfortunately. Oh. They fall off of Pixel, and because of that, Kiyo has no problem killing them off. The inconsistency of the aim when they're falling just bites the Carlton Ravens, more specifically Jack Lorf in the rear. Rayano with two kills to open that round still wasn't enough for St. Clair Saints to survive because Rivson has been the fastest entry into the A site we've seen all game, but they've also been the fastest death two out of the three rounds we've seen them push it already. Yeah, and I mean, to be expected on a round after that, you're saying, wow, that's really good looking for Carlton, though. Regardless of what was handed to him, they made sure to only have two players remaining after a full buy round, which is kind of supposed to be intended to be a massive retaliation to the first two that came out. Look at the buys right now. I'm not going to say they're horrendous, but St. Clair doesn't have very much to work with. That, where now those half armor differences make phantoms just as good, if not better, than Vandals because they have that one tap potential at any range and they put out about twice the amount of bullets. It's absolute absurdity. You have to make sure how to use that. And knowing the speed of these Carlton Ravens, knowing the speed of this team and looking at their entire setup, I mean, their composition enough tells you that they're looking to press this W key kind of leaves you questioning why they're so hesitant to do it right now. I mean... I guess it's just information. They feel like maybe they don't have enough. But we're just yeah. casters. We're not God. They don't have yeah. all the answers. Yeah. I mean, we, we have kind of have that, you know, omnipotent view of being able to see the, the three third person cam and the mini map and all these things. But I mean, sometimes we're just as much of a loss to these players as they seemingly are to themselves. Nightfall's been popped. Ribson just catches four tap and completely unaware no one's in the back of boathouse so that's theoretically the full side available for the carlton ravens rips them from staircase takes down q who's holding defensive spawn just the same now putting a three-player man count for st Clair saints they gotta hope they find their mother Teresa here to try to save the day because they look like this round could be prepped for the carlton ravens side instead mzu are looking to swing out behind endeavor unfortunately both mm. endeavor and seb will fall and it's not far behind from zero as Snyder clears them for the 3k a flawless round for the carlton ravens would you look at that get away from a and you close is. out b spectacularly and even then, I mean, a timeout to come out from the side, not of St. Clair, the losing yeah. side, keep in mind, Carlton going ahead and giving you a minute to let that salt kind of sit in the womb, burn a little bit, and see how you're going to really react to it in this next round. Because the one thing that we saw before we saw this kind of timeout coming around was the money, it was the situation of these players and what they were kind of handed. And I can tell you right now, and I'll just give you a quick little reminder, it's absolutely nothing. <laughs> they forced out that last round, Tried to buy out the Phantoms, tried to buy out the Vandals, a couple judges here and there, full armors, half armors, whatever you can get, go ahead and get it. Well, uh, all you did was get got, because there's absolutely nothing to work with right now. I mean, look at that, about $3,000 for every single member, and that's just shy of you to kind of conjure something up, but you're in a round right now to where you're saying, man, that jet that isn't our top frag and it's our Sova, no real diss to you, but that Blaze Storm better go crazy right here. Otherwise, all this money that we're using, why even waste it in the first place? I feel like the timeout was such a a, a mega mind move here, Dallas. Yeah. Right? I mean, you talk about rubbing salt in the wounds. Everyone knows that when you're a kid and you trip in the playground, it's not just like the scrape on your knee that 
you know, hurts the worst when you first get it. It's the isopropyl alcohol your mom shoves into it right after the fact, right, to clean it. That's the worst part. The salt in the room, the isopropyl alcohol, and the little cut you got on your knee. The Carlton Ravens, on top of that, they were, like we mentioned at the very beginning, a little slow on pressing that W key and engaging into that round. And we were a little questionable about why the hesitancy. There's one. Now they have a little bit more time That's to it. talk things out in its totality. And it is a great way to set yourself up. Another slow round. Let the St. Clair Saints feed in. Blade Storm out. Yeah, it gets one. But it's Rivzin, who you lose the majority of the rounds anyways. You still know what to do after the fact. You just lost a lot of that kind of initiating power of actually getting on to site with that duelist. And as soon as you uttered the words as a kid, I was like, this man is on the same exact note as I am. I thought we were <laughs> mentally connected. We kind of went a different direction with it. I was thinking more of kind of like when you do something kind of dumb, not really like terrible, not worth being punished, but your parents just kind of like, you know what? Just sit down and think about what you've done. And that's oh, really what that was. Is yes. is you're just really getting in your own head of being like, what did I do? Well, you bought one we shouldn't have. I mean, there's a reason we see these kind of exact trends happen over and over again. You don't buy in the third round, then you buy in the next one, or you play off a of force, and then that's all you do. You don't need to force up to help your teammates. They are the ones who stayed alive. They're the ones who earned those guns. You didn't. Stop messing up the economy. Well, what's going on right now is you're messing in the face of these players. Big exchanges on the A side. It's a 2v2, but the spike needs to go down, and you got time to do it, but not enough. No! <laughs> St. Clair Saints pull off what seemed like the impossible. All off the front force of Seth with the shorty at the arches of A. Carlton Ravens thought they had essentially dealt with that danger. Throw it a zero point, throw down the cosmic divide, engage with a flash. You'd say, hey, what's Seth going to do? He's more likely than not going to retreat through doors. Let's pull switch and then be done with them. No, Seth has the shorty. Your intel was only halfway there. You didn't know that they were going to play that up close engagement. They don't care about their util. Suppress them as much as they want. The shorty is going to knock down one, damage another down to 10 HP. Then you got the wide swing from your omen, a perfect play from the St. Clair Saints and unfortunately the Carlton Ravens ran right into it and so that cheeky timeout does not warrant them enough success right off the back of it no command pop though here is that full suppressing force the Carlton Ravens Ripson swings in aggressively off the back of a boost pack but unfortunately Niner has been DB and owed and is in desperate need of a pickup after a wonderful mm. collapse play Seth finding two more four tapping for two of their own mm. and guess who's the last left standing Rivzen, who just gives four tapping the three pick uh oh somebody got a little bit too hurt and they're walking out the hospital with some crutches because now we're seeing that operator here on the field and i mean I, don't don't get me wrong endeavor would probably piece me up in any lobby ever but it's just it's so funny to see that we're seeing this gun come into the game so 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 late we're now looking at double digits coming up for the next round on either one of these teams worst case situation i mean it is inevitable here and you're seeing a force coming out of carlton after that kind of lack of speed of what we saw in the last round once you pop that null command once again as i mentioned earlier it's not the answer to all your problems but a really good first blood could definitely be just that you go at the end of that round, you're talking about crutches. There's one cool thing about getting a cast on your leg or something like that. You, you get it signed, and that's, you know, a couple kills here and there in the round. But you still got to deal with the fact you can't participate in PE. There is no recess for you. You can't go outside and have fun with the rest of your friends at the same time. There are way too many negatives to the cast in comparison to the few that you get for a couple kills slash a couple signatures on top of it. They need to find actual results. The Carlton Ravens need to do a much better job. And they're going to play that same slow style they were trying to work from before. But they have to be a lot more decisive when it comes to their actual engagements. They're swinging in and they're just losing too many men. When they get first blood like they have here in this round, you look at that and say, hey, now we know there's at least one man off the board. Where are the other two playing? Are they playing an even 2-2 two -two, or are they splitting things up with a 3-1? They even to a 2-2. Two -two. Rivzen goes for the showstopper and once again, not finding anything off the back of it. But it does open up the space for them quite a lot. And I think that's honestly enough to say it's a successful showstopper. 30 seconds. Yeah, good looks already. I mean, a showstopper to come out. Finally a successful one is what I'd say considering the first two weren't exactly the most effective. I mean, just a showstopper in general has a lot of an factor of an intimidation behind it. But... 
you got to make sure to actually get those kills to kind of linger that responsibility that you have of being the intimidation factor. So already a retake having to go underway here for St. Clair. A very good start coming out from Q, and that's kind of to be expected out of the top fragger on the side of St. Clair. And they are just collapsing on this site, checking every single corner, spraying things down. Sure, one goes a little bit unchecked, but finally, Amzuwu can step things down for the likes of Jack Lorf and said, sure, you're looking good, but you're not as good as Q, and maybe give me a couple more rounds and I'll surpass you as well. It's a back and forth battle. This is what we were talking about, how Ascent is never truly a one team's map when it comes to the Champions Division. Yeah, you can play this map darn well, but there's a limit. You're playing against another insane team in the Champions Divisions here. You have to respect them on this map. Find a different map to pick. Leave this one for the final. Leave this one for the decider. At the very least, we know this map's always going to be competitive. It'd be a very fun final map to try to deal with Dallas saying, hey, this game could go either way. It's really down to the wire. Leave some kind of, I don't know, excitement to the board. But it kind of stinks, you know, with the you know, thought process that there could be a second map that just ultimately falls very decisively one way or over the other, unlike this map has been. But good golly, look at the intel behind that Hunter's Fury. Two kills with it, a third was assisted, and Zuwu swings out after the fact, and it's just nine or less standing. And they're looking a lot like the 49ers in the playoffs. They get cut down, not even nary a chance. Oh, that's not the 49ers' fault. Uh, that's and a QB a situation. Yeah. That is just absolutely horrendous. Well, Mr. But, Irrelevant, but he got hurt, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that's a different sport that we're probably sure. To, we're talking about <laughs> Canadian teams here. Let's not leave them out of the loop. We're, we're excluding as many yeah, people as possible with that comment. But, I mean, all things considered, I mean, you got to look at the scoreboard, and even in St. Clair, to kind of wrap back around to that point that you mentioned about Ascent and how it's kind of that gentleman in the agreement map. This is St. Clair's pick, keep in mind. So, I mean, sure, good for them. You finally have a lead here after that first half. Things were a little bit shaky, but hey, you're starting to get the hang of it because you're saying, look, now we got to play on the operator. Now we got to play the good old down that D main side or right down the middle of the map. But it comes out of those smokes. And keep in mind, Jack has been absolutely on point with these. So, so long as you can use those smokes to close that gap and overwhelm all these players. Honestly, with this kind of placement of this utility on the map, I think, honestly, wherever they find out that Jet is, they should just press the key there because they know that's one less player that can really have an answer against them. Yeah, I mean, Jet's utility allows for them to have a quick escape, but how truly fast can Apparently. they get it? it? It got nerfed quite a bit where you have to, like, queue it up again. They've got to be ready for it. And if you're coming out in a bit of a shock factor, they're not getting away. And the Carlton Ravens have been good enough to close out the majority of their kills. Yeah, they probably face the inevitability of that, I don't know, uh, shaky nature that comes with a one-on-one, -on -one, kind of those rounds that you kind of have to clutch up. Yeah, they've lost the majority of those, especially when it comes to the second half. We've seen way too many of those 1v1s go the other way of St. Clair. But in these early rounds where they have teammates behind them, Carl Ravens are very good at punishing those kind of discrepancies that are left up to the wary. Huge play here once again by St. Clair, though. Nano swarms down. That separates Rivzim from the rest of the team. That also allows for Seth to get at least a back shot there onto Rubski. Finally dealt with, though, by Jackalope. So an even trade through and through. But Carlton Ravens have control over towards site, and Rayana will get down that plant. But an O-Command has been popped oh. in. That could be rough to work with, but Rivzim shocks the world and takes down Endeavor by swinging up through pixels. Keep in mind, that's too much, not too much of a problem considering the mean, what was Jack going to do with a retake or with an operator anyway. It's just holding an angle. But you gotta make sure to clear those angles first and have players to do that. And they're doing exactly that. Good exchanges everywhere, but Rayano is that player that we were talking about. Mother Teresa gifting guns and rounds to the team to get back into this thing. What a round by Rayano, who, I don't know, slept a little bit here in the second half. Let's be frank, their performance in the first was Clutch King, always the last alive, survived every round they started. They don't have that same sort of leeway when it comes to the attack where the whole team needs to engage on a site. They're playing back up to Rivzen. They're falling behind them. So Rivzen falls. Rayano's responsibility is to refrag and then follow in and be behind them. That's a bit dangerous, especially when you don't have the same kind of youth till that your, you know, duelist has up front for escapability and kind of maneuverability. And they've been dying a lot because of that. But wonderful positioning, wonderful play style. Ribson, you almost had Endeavor. Too close to call, though. And Endeavor will survive with a shorty in hand alongside that operator. The big boomstick they are ready to use at a moment's notice. And we just give the time of day until finally Jack will swing. And that's top dog off the board. Not a great spot for the Carlton Ravens. 
And not only that, Spike also being completely revealed to the rest of the team on the side of St. Clair to say, Spike's in the middle of the map. We did their plan for that mid control, make your rotation, see what you can hold down, see if you can collapse and really just kind of almost just mm. completely suffocate them. And that seems like exactly what they're doing so far. Pick after pick after pick after pick. This could have been around to really hammer things down for Carlton because if they would have gotten that, rid of that operator once more and said, sweet. You spent a lot of money, buddy, just to lose that thing twice in a row, but that's not the case. Instead, you were just getting picked down, and you're getting swatted off like flies. Forks happen. Now the only player to fall for St. Clair Sands Varsity Dallas, and well, they die. They drop ribs into 5 HP, and that allows for the lol funny turret to secure the kill here. Placed up on stack. Thank you very much, Observer, for really pointing out that location. <laughs> Rubbing salt in the wound, so to say, for when Carlton Ravens watch this VOD back. I can only assume they do so. If you're in the Champions Division, Dallas, you're VOD reviewing these matches to kind of discover what went wrong and what could be changed. So, I mean, it's really hard to say there was much that could be changed in that round. St. Clair Saints, once they got that first pick, it's kind of like a domino effect for the rest of it. You talked about it. They just suffocate where they know the push is coming from. They knew there was going to be pressure coming through mid. So what did they do? They gave up bottom mid majority wise, put a player in defensive spawn, and then left a player deep in market round corner so that they could hold that away. Because they knew B main was going to be safe because they left their sofa there in the first place. Ugh. Such a huge stepping oh. stone for the St. Clair side. Face Unfortunately, though, fear. they do find a guy's first pick here. They lose the operator, and now they have to try to climb back into this one. And thankfully, it's kind of working. Lockdown oh. used so much potential. They've even thanks to a two on two with Rupski taking down yet another, but they've got to move this spike away and four tapping may just, oh, I don't even know what's going on anymore. I don't know how they survived this, but they step away from Puppy with a shrouded step and they'll at least survive. But that makes the Carlton Ravens question moving to A. They'll move back through mid through market. Here. Yeah, I mean, good tap so far I means some good damage in terms of the spread and on the entire field. But I mean, you got to look to see what exactly they're hooking up. So a little bit of a gun upgrade, another one to work with. Problem is, Rihanna may be good, Jack may be great, but it seems like Q's just that much better already. Again and again and again, you're finding the success. Rivski is stuck in between a rock and a hard place, but the window opens up and you let him cross over to the B site. You're letting these isolated fights occur now. Yeah, this is a trickle effect, right? You feed into Rupski and eventually they'll they'll stuff themselves silly, so to say, right? You give me a three course meal with two more players left to go. They try to go and down their first little snack, the spike to go down. The Q will try to swing over from oh. staircase, but they are having none of it. And the St. Clair St. Varsity side will secure themselves, not just the first map win, but their map win. So we don't see that kind of collegiate special come out, Dallas, of winning your opponent's map. It was a very difficult Defenders ascent for please. them, but a three round advantage at the end. That is as solid as you can really ask for in the Champions Division for a set. Yeah, I mean, to be expected, obviously it was their map pick and we were kind of favoring them just a little bit because I mean, the collegiate effect is that we don't see a massive overwhelming advantage to one squad or the other. This isn't some T1 team picking on some couple of high schoolers sitting together. I mean, this is going to be as close as possible. I mean, that's the point of these divisions. And I mean, they're going ahead and holding true once more. But the Champions Division, keep in mind, as we mentioned earlier, is not something to joke around with. You saw that take effect right here. 13-10, 13-11, somewhere. So long as both teams get double digits and that's somebody's map pick, it's something you can brag about saying that we won it, but barely. And that's not something you can really walk away with kind of happy. You're, you're, you're thankful, sure. But that doesn't really show a testament to your team's strength and saying that, boom, we can really just start pushing through for the next couple of ones. Because that is your map pick. Keep in mind, if Carlton wins their map pick, then you're going on to Pearl. And you're saying, well, a sit was our pick. That should have been your safety net, brother. That yeah. shouldn't have been anything else. So there's a little bit more to look forward to. And we still got a little bit more of a game to see out of St. Clair here. Sure, I mean, their entire scoreboard was a little bit one-sided, I'd say, towards that top end. But they still got plenty more time to pick it up. Yeah, there is so much more time to work with. You talked about, you know, it's not a T1 team dogging down like a lower-ranked team or anything. But I'll point out, staff on the side of St. Clair, we get a little bit of tidbits, insider information for these players. Get some interesting facts from their universities. This one here, their former T2 player who played for Zero Marks and Black and YFP, who both you and I would recognize. And, uh, I mean, they, they have the high-ranking individuals, right? They have that yep. potential having former T2. And they also had quite a few players that 
worked from their junior varsity team up to or their academy team, they call it, to their varsity team. So they've got fresh blood, so to say, into that team as well. They've got a lot of stepping stones, a lot of potential. Maybe we're just seeing the beginning of that on a map like Ascent. Maybe the second map can change things up for them and they'll win it too well. We'll have to see that. We'll check that out after a quick break. I'll see you guys soon.
Well, that was one tough egg to crack on a sense, but still managed to come out on top, the St. Clair side. And, well, it wasn't that costly of a map, so to say, but the heading into the second one here on Haven, where it's no longer their map pick. Yeah, it's kind of like a gentleman's agreement map, like a sin, but it's nowhere close, Dallas. Nowhere close, right? Yeah, it's We're just not even that. <laughs> Why would and you Haven. say that? <laughs> it's like an 80 to 20, right? It's Haven like is still one of the top three, but... And that's a handshake? That's like a handshake of like uh, Beetlejuice trying to give a handshake to, I don't know, like LeBron James or Sha <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal. Those are two completely different heights that just cannot reach each other without a step stool. There, I mean, all right, all right, all right. If we took a send out, Haven would be in the top two for maps, right? So you yeah. consider the top three. But buying guns, the, the amount that a cent is chosen is just disparagingly larger, higher, right? Yeah. Like it's you can't it's an outlier right like it's a sin you can't can't say too much here right it's fair haven is still one of those ones that teams are going to know so while we had those little arguments before kind of saying this is the map why are you struggling what's going on haven can be the same thing just to a little bit smaller of a degree it really comes down to agent selection and haven's yeah. a map that agent selection can truly be anything are you gonna go with the raise fade combo or you're gonna have fun and go neon instead and really close that gap as fast as you possibly can. It's up in the air, but it's probably the biggest deciding factor for this map. You've already mentioned the neon. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more influence on Jack and that controller pick that we saw in the last map. Controllers mean that much more here on Haven. You have three sites. You want to control the map and you don't want to cut it down to two. You want to make sure to get that full control of one. That's usually how it works. But here on Haven, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. Just purely on the defensive side, considering that the rotations are a little bit further, the avenues on to site for the attacking side are that much more narrow, and to even then, you get a lot more decisions to say, well, I got an entire plethora of options of how to get on to site, so long as it, I just get onto the opposing side of the field. I get from that attacking half into the defensive half, and you have a lot of ways to get there, but you need to have that coverage. You have to have a way to go ahead and lock things down, make sure you're not getting shot in the ears, and well, controllers are going to be your assets to do that. So we can already see a little bit of a switch up there. 
Sure, we get the double fade kind of once again, an easy little character to throw down because it's just like so, but you just throw her up on a roof. You don't even need to have a lineup for the hunt. It'll give you all the information in the world. But the difference between it there is Jack now switching off that Astra onto the Viper. Meanwhile, we see four tapping, going ahead and taking reins of that exact character. There is no duelist for Carlton. I mean, fair. Everyone's a duelist with the brimstem. I guess that's what they're going for. The right? KO, but I mean, we don't even see that. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, if you have the stem, everyone's a duelist, right? You're just all about closing that gap, firing faster, moving quicker. I don't know. It, it feels <sighs> like Carlton are they're doing something here. Carlton definitely was a lot pick. more confident about pressing that W key than St. Clair was. Yeah, so, true. I mean, you got to get props there. And then also, he's going to play to their play style a little bit. The one thing that kind of just is hesitant for me is Jack on that Viper instead of on the Astro now, because say, I mean, obviously they're committing to a side then. There is no takesies backsies when it comes around to Viper. You cannot put those mooks anywhere else. So you don't get any more to play with. So uh, I think, honestly, it's a pretty easy read here for St. Glare, so long as their defensive holds are outstanding. And this is the side they're starting on, so they got a pretty good foot to start with. Well, we'll have to see how it ultimately pans out. The Toxic Screen's already been tossed out here for the Carlton Ravens. Rotate. Keep in mind, Chamber hasn't been, you know, the go-to pick, but you're still really worried about those isolated one-on-one -on -one fights when it comes to C long, especially when you need that viability of that rotation. If, say, the push towards B doesn't work, you want to make a slow play to A and bait over towards C. It is important to kind of leave that one player. We can see kind of how they're looking to do so. They have that Viper there first and foremost. Jack Lossman, an amazing player to deal with. I think that's the smart idea. Niner opens up for the first blood. Seth tries to join in after the fact. And it's not really found that same impact. The turret zones them away that was placed on Hay, and ultimately it's kind of a non-factor as they're just down a man. They haven't really been able to find much past that point. They did tag down Rubisky, but not enough damage all across the board, and it looks like B-side is kind of inevitably going to be taken here soon. A good looking so far. Not too much blood to be shed, and surprisingly not a massive push towards the A-side, which is what we see in every single lobby. So a nice change of pace here, and even then a lot more kills going to the side of Carlton. A good start for him. And just as I said A-side, apparently uh, a Spidey Sense tingled inside their head to say, this is a pretty good idea. Well, you know, the fastest route to A is through mid and B, and then B link, and then over to A-side, right? That's the fastest way there. There's definitely not a route called left. short or long that gets you there faster and just less total dangers and sight lines Spike to go against. Planted. No, nothing in the case whatsoever. Jack Lorf, though, takes down Q and that long, long route through the A-side Finished. from the backside is at least able to net the Carlin Ravens a spike Ooh. placement on objective. Seth, though, with a nice share of shot, is able to knock down one, Tardy looking out. to find a bit more turret placed up on top of stack, but only oh. player gets spotted from it. They don't have a problem cleaning them out. A great angle to be held by Niner. Yeah. Saves the life of their teammate. What a great way to go about it. That's a first round one for the Carlton Ravens on a site. That was, that was just shy. Yeah. yeah, that was just shy with that turret there. I mean, considering that it didn't have that top to bottom perspective, that, I mean, that crate was covering up that lineup to where, honestly, that was perfect there in terms of the actual patience from the side of St. Clair and more specifically Q to say, look, I'm just going to hold this thing. They're probably going to swing into it. But no, it was Niner specifically. Sorry. But, I mean, good holds, good guns now being purchased. Spectres across the field. No real singers being brought up for the side of St. Clair. They're kind of taking that loss to the chin, and they're saying we're not going to go ahead and diminish our value any more so to what we're kind of being choked up with these next couple just because of that one simple mistake. And I mean, I, I love teams that do that. That's kind of how the game was intended to be played, and you play for the third round here. But just make this one expensive. You're playing on the defense. You can buy shorties. You can buy those classics, which it costs free 99 and just hold around a corner with that right click available, and it's almost just as good. So with you not having the benefit of holding these corners and playing around these angles, you can get possibly one or two. It just comes around to rotating fast enough where you have the players on site and the resources there to create that stuff and slow things down. Now let's go ahead and flash around the corner. Shorty in hand for Endeavor, and we see much like we saw Seth do in map one and ascent towards the A opener. They damage two, clear out one, and now that player is going to have a rough time on site. However, teammates galore for the Carlton Ravens, and they're not making the same mistakes that were made just pri previously. They're going to allow for them to actually seemingly capsize the defensive structure on A. They have spike placement down. They've denied a peek in through walkway. 
And I don't think we're going to see the St. Clair side pivot up towards heaven. They just don't have the potential for their kit to go that way. Though they did have a marshal to work with. It's short-lived as Rayana with a Spectre quickly closes it out. And Seth's turret will also be destroyed just as quickly. They'll collect the marshal, maybe go for a body shot, but overall, save that one. Not too sure why. They're going to die to Spike. Thank goodness. Yeah. Marshall's not worth the extra bit to hold on to, and at least you deny the uh, extra credits for the side there, Carlton. Especially with the street, get that extra kind of credits rolling down, the double down of the loss bonus. I mean, there's just not enough returns there to say, you know what, I stole into a marshal. But even then, you don't have enough credits to even buy an entire kit yeah. for a couple of these players. Q and four tapping. Sadly enough, looking at half armor purchases and Seth as well, I talked about the punishment, the consequences of purchasing during that second round. They're still feeling it like immensely, not just to a small degree where it seems like they're sacrificing some utility here and there. They will not be able to fight nearly as much as they want to to where almost these specters are going to feel like phantoms. I think the craziest part is for the Carlton Ravens, they don't even really have to worry about it. St. Clair would have been able to buy up a lot better, at least, if they had actually managed to get a substantial amount of kills. However, that was not the case. Carlton Ravens stayed alive through and through and denied a lot of what St. Clair Saints are trying to go for the retake. And because of that, they just don't have enough money throughout wow. all of it. Jack Lorf with a wonderful, yeah, wonderful toss up for their toxic cloud on top of the arch, so to say, that little, what do you call that? Framing, I'll say, of the, of the hall. And allows for a one way for those feet, but that only buys enough time for a little bit. Rivzen, though, does even the odds after that first blood they lost. Takes down the Jets for the side of St. Clair. Four tapping finds a bit of success to the player of Niner, who was down in hell. So they're trying to move quicker in towards short as well. But two players there will be able to die. And Jack mm. Lorf, who seemingly went unnoticed, finds a lot more than just that first assisted kill. They go above and beyond, now leaving it for an even two on two. And yes, time is not on the side of St. Clair. The question is, is there an angle? And there isn't. Rivson, not going to make it. It is easily closed out. Or the Carlton Ravens, as St. Clair had no time and way too many problems dealing with the players on site. It's not that Jack Lorf went unnoticed. It's just that four tapping was trying to clear that corner and didn't get even the opportunity to see Jack in that corner because of the insane shot. Irivsky down there in sewers just going ahead and giving that coverage. I mean, that was a perfect execution. The shots are just absolutely hitting and really connecting right now here for Carlton. As you can already tell off that 3-0 start, St. Clair, they already took a lot of hits when it came around to the economy. They don't really have as much potential when it comes around to making sure to even have the opportunities to hit those shots. Well, that's going to be something they have to really consider coming up here soon because, I mean, this game will only get more and more difficult. They're on the defensive side of the map. They don't have plant money that they get every single time, but it doesn't seem to matter in a situation like this where they make it at least a 3v3. I mean, an interesting star for St. Clair. They got a little aggressive to their work off the back of those sheriffs. And done yet. Ain't done yet. Seth, though, wonderful play to take down two, leaving just Rupski, who, yeah, got the bonus of the clutch in that last round, but it doesn't really matter, right? It's not a big deal whatsoever. I mean, uh, you're holding it, but you're not holding it, right? Like, Carlton Ravens, I think this will be your first round loss. We're looking I'll at a possible 3-1. Rupski's going to have a lot to clutch up on the board. They don't have the lockdown available, and I don't think this would be a round choice to solo open if you get a pick on site to then engage and hold them back at a post plant. This is a kind of give up scenario. You have a nano swarm to hold that anyways, and you would have had a turret, but not a concern anymore. And you'll have that alarm button actually coming up here in just one second. So a lot of util still available. With 30 seconds on the board and spike under your control, you have left. all the sites to choose from. And they don't like A. <laughs> so they're going to go probably towards B or in through garage to C, and I think that's where they're doing so now. Well, let's see how big of a brain is under this beanie right now, because, I mean, there is a potential to obviously win this round. I mean, with the alarm button to work with, the turret to be playing off of as well, but, I mean, you got to make sure to kind of pick that thing up, right? As soon as that spike goes down, you need to recall that joker and see if that can at least have somewhat of an employment inside this round, but it's not even a consideration. Rubski's looking to push all the way into spawn, see if he can bring the fight to the side of St. Clair, but that's just not happening so far. First one we brought down so darn close. But yet no cigars, you do see finally St. Clair winning that first round, but by a very, very narrow margin, I'll say. And of course, yeah. it's anybody but Seth to go ahead and be the closer for that one. Beanie on Beanie action, and unfortunately for what? the Carlton Ravens, the Beanie. They both had Beanies. It was the, it was the kid. All right, whatever. It's fine. 
St. Clair Saints, they find themselves their first round win. Really off the back of Sep. Let's be brutally honest there. Not only were they last to survive, they were in an engagement where it was a two-on-one. It's not a big deal. Give up one player's life. You go for the refag. That's not really the, the deciding factor, I would say. What was was Sep with the Phantom holding a main, holding that lobby. Taking down two of the Carlton Ravens, trying to swing over towards that side. They did a much better job closing out the Carlton Ravens. And it was kind of a shock factor in the first place. They had Mzuru and they had Endeavor holding Sheriffs. They found a pick apiece. Carlton Ravens trying to say, hey, we've got ourselves two pick. Yeah, we got traded, but we can go over to the A site. No, you can't. You're being held there as well. A lot of stages to the St. Clair Saints defense, which I think is going to be the important factor when it comes to their team composition, especially the fact that they need to play for the second half when they have the attack in that jet, where they should theoretically be better prepped for an objective push. That just isn't really working out. Molly's and Nano swarms to really deal some damage. Seth swings around that backside. They're down to one HP, and Jack Lorf will kill them off. Dang. Closing and securing for a four on four, but that's seemingly a sight for the Carlton Ravens. How the hell does Jack do it? Genuinely. I mean, that I is the like fourth kill in this game or in this entire series we've seen where that player gets a kill while under 50 health. It is just outstanding. But regardless, we got to put that behind us because there's still a round that they got to win regardless at the end of the day. And it comes down to a shutdown being employed there in the middle of the map, looking to lock down that B site, trying to play some more defensive power. But good God, it's illegal. Stop. <laughs> and it's hard. Get him out! Oh, no. Get him out! Stabby, stabby! There it is! <laughs> <laughs> I love that ability so much. <laughs> oh my goodness. You never get to see it actually no. like, truly lock down people, detain them, right? It's so rare, but just just a, a hair on the back of his head, right? Just that ponytail you got there just not really working. It's not going to happen. For you really have to make a like whole it. secondary account. Yeah, like create an alt account and that's the only way you're gonna see it you have to throw all your ranked games like that's the only way you're gonna see it yeah yeah that's i don't have to throw work. my ranked games I'm already i'm already low ranked so it's not a big deal yeah you may have to throw your ranked games just keep with me it'll be fine by the way crawling right. ravens four one star they're looking pretty good i'll be brutally honest that last mm -hmm. round the way that they close into sight jack lore who three kills alone in the round Below yeah. 50 hp might i add once again like you said it should be illegal by all honesty jack lore we talked about in the first, if you're below 50% HP, that's where the, in your mind, that switch has to be made. Start to play cheeky wrangle. Start to play just cheeky in general. How are you going to hold different than you would if you're at 100 HP? You don't want to take fair fights. You don't want to take the expected fights. You want to play in spots that are kind of unexpected. Jack Lorf swings unexpectedly through the back of the Then they hold an expected angle inside. Oh. Where they have a little bit more assistance. Mzuwu seemingly had the chance there, but squanders it. And it is a inevitable spike placement for the Carlton Ravens with just Seth left planted. standing. Another case where I say don't use the lockdown. It's a 3v1. Just play as best you can. Yeah, and I like the denial there as well. I mean, the orbital barrage being brought down. Sure, you're thinking, oh, it's a 3v2. Why would you be popping that? And I mean, in terms of a uh, retaliation and answer, that rolling thunder, I like the setup. Even then, I like the execution as well. Carlton Ravens, I mean, look at Ascent and see what St. Clair was doing during their first half when it came around to this map. You couldn't really tell it was their selection. But, I mean, right now, Carlton? You can definitely tell this is their map. You can definitely yeah. tell this was what they went for in the selection. And, I mean, all things being, that, sure, they're on the attacking side, which is very much favored in this map, considering there is three sites to take care of. But, I mean, uh, I think there's just no signs of slowing down. It's just the execution. It's the way they're holding these sites in the pose plan. It's the way they're finding those trades. I mean, it's just not the scoreboard alone and the red and green that tells you what's happening. That's not telling the story here. It's the angles. Just look at the mini map and see how things move around on their attacking side. And better yet, the holds they make once that spike does finally go down. Look at the play we're seeing come out for the Carlton Ravens. You said it's very obviously their map, and they're trying to make the A site their objective of choice. Just Seth truly defending it. And a quick sky smoke will deny all options for Seth up in heaven. That's kind of a problem to work. I don't even know. Okay, thank goodness. It was not forward time. That was clear. That was, that was the assistant player. I insane still that that angle was actually successfully held despite that. Seth, though, able from walkway from defender spawn, takes care of one. They're going to get double swung. Seth remaining. still finds both. This should not be allowed. Seth should not be able to find so many kills uncontested against the Carlton Ravens. At this point, you have to just fear this one player. Everyone else who seemingly 
don't have very many difficulties dealing with. But Seth, I don't know. Are you scared of their old T2 talk, team talk. prowess? Are you just scared of them in general? This KJ should not be that threatening. No, and honestly, it is the ultimate that really made that call to be swinging. Because I was questioning it there for a second in my own head to say, why would you keep swinging this player? I mean, you know, you see the yellow puffer jacket, and you're saying, that's that's the top scorer on their team. That is the 11 and 3 player. And that's something that we can't really take care of. And honestly, you just decide to swing it anyways, one by one by one. And inevitably, you, you, well, I mean, you kind of get what you asked for. But all things considered, I mean, when you bring the ultimate into a factor there, and you know that, okay, this player's probably going to pop this thing. That's usually when you make that call. I'm surprised they even had the spike down. When you saw that pressure coming in from the flank, and I mean, you know you have a KJ there. Honestly, you just wait for that push. Wait for that lockdown to go through, and that's when you make the play, because then you have an incentive to actually push up just rather than regular blood, which is coming to you anyways. But a little bit of a repeat. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, apparently, even if it is broke, sometimes <laughs> we'll do it once more. Yeah, what's the chances they'll flank four players from the rear again, right? Very small. Slim to, slim to low, right? I mean, <laughs> actually, St. Clair's have already done it three times. There it is. Two of them. This round, though, not really an option. Lockdown goes down, and typically you'd say, hey, you have a breach. You can deal with that. You also Run. had a normal strike previously. You have Kit and Util to work with. Now you don't really have much. A player was detained. That's not good. Toxic Cloud will go down. Endeavor's going to stick it despite the fact. Rayano gets Intel off the back of... I guess a little bit of assistance, but it doesn't seem to matter too much. The Toxic Bite will actually find one, and... Seth will die to it as well. St. Clair are trickling players into this plant scenario. There's so much denial that's there for the Carlton Ravens, and it's still not enough. The Molly is too slow. You have a Viper and a Brim, for goodness sake, and you're not popping it fast enough. You need a timer, a clock, and you're hit a stopwatch from your coach or something. You gotta play that in the right timing. Let me go ahead, and obviously this is something, I mean, considering that, I mean, we've had ourselves a pretty long offseason, is that one of the changes that was made is that KJ shutdowns now have 200 HP. Oh my God. So when you mentioned Breach and that Aftershock, I want to make a little bit of a mental note for people here is that does not kill, even with all three ticks hitting. Breach Aftershocks hit for 60 damage a tick, which would total for 180. That still would not be enough to find a kill on that shutdown. So that's why everybody has to run. There is no other option rather than just hitting that thing outright because even KO nades have a problem nailing that thing unless it is right next to it or on top of it. You gotta save your orbital strike for it. You gotta play for a total counter, ult on ult. That's, yep. that makes KJ a lot more viable as well. That's a very yep. important that's why we're seeing her today, baby. That's huge. I guess that's why we're seeing it on both sides. I'm glad to see that. My second favorite operative choice for that role, the first one being Cypher. I just like Cyber. He's got a cool hat, and he throws it down occasionally. I, I like that, Sage. Though. Who doesn't love some motherly love, right? Welcome to no, my world. Sage is great, though. So, uh, just like your play style of trying to just go in and carry in low rank divisions. Oh, Self-healing. They nerfed that. Whatever, though. Finding themselves a nice first blood. Takes down the Bram on the side of Carlton Ravens. That does give St. Clair's another chance. We talked about once they get that Operator in hand, they typically are a very fickle... Uh, I guess team to try to play against. They easily cut down players. Seconds, they always find those first bloods, and it looks like we may see the continuation of that. But a, a viper's pit could cause a little bit more than just a couple problems. It's eventually, they have to push into it, and St. Clair is just not really fine in the same success you'd expect. Yeah, and even then, more times than not, I mean, you're very intimidated, obviously, by a Viper's Pit. You're like, man, things are a little bit of a problem. Problem is, it's Jack's Viper's Pit, and that's where I'd say, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. We're saving for the next one. Yeah, we run it back later. Not right here, right Woo! now, but it doesn't matter. St. Clair, when you find that initial pick to the back on Jack, you know the rest of the round is under wraps. What a play. You take down Jack Low from the flank, like you mentioned, and that just sets everything up. It seems like an inevitability once Jack Lorp has been taken down that the round will fall in their favor, especially if Seth is still alive. You know my opinion. A team that frags together typically wins together. A team that has a very even stat line across the board. I would say Carlton is a little bit more even because they don't have that extreme outlier that is Seth on the side of St. Clair. But I won't say that their stats are poor. Not in the slightest. 5-5-4-3. Five, five, yeah, it's 
ninth round, 10th round coming up right now, but just still are very even across. Seth has very much so been leading the pack, but he's only been giving you guys a couple straggler rounds. The rounds that you have been winning, it's been together as a team. That flank over through A, the retake and ice sight with that lockdown. So much was there. They're coordinating very well. And I feel like as a team, they're playing a lot more together than we're seeing what Carlton Ravens are doing. Yeah, I mean, I'm liking the execution, Carlton. I mean, we saw earlier, but keep in mind, oddly enough, still, as soon as we saw that Operator being introduced to the game, even then, it's not even finding the impact or finding all the kills in the world, but still, oddly enough, every time that purchase occurs, it seems like St. Clair is kind of something turns on inside their head and they play the game completely different. It's more just kind of the reactionary and the responsibility handed to this endeavor. Just kind of holding an entire slot themselves and that confidence that they can kind of over invest in other spots and say, well, Endeavor's got this, right? And Endeavor never gets pushed. It's never too much of a problem, but finally you get pushed right there by a Bulldog and that's a pretty good exchange for money. 2,000 creds to get rid of 4,700. Problem is, what can you do to shred off an ultimate? Absolutely nothing. That's an orbital barrage, buy out time. That's all it comes down to. Spike is a ticking. You got to get on site. And I don't think it's going to happen. This is a tough spot for St. Clair. And Zuwu is on site, but on, on. post plan being so well prepped for that C long, it's, it just seems impossible to go for it. And in fact, will be the case. Caillou goes down first, and then Zuwu will join them after the fact. And that nets Carlton Ravens their even position at halftime. But I'll be frank. Even best case scenario for them to go eight and four oh. or Haven in the state at which it is right now, yeah. that's not even like the best case scenario for you, right? That's still a very reasonable thing for St. Clair to come back, especially when they actually have an individual that can close sight lines and gaps simultaneously, that jet of endeavor, who we know can play very well. They had a very good showcase on Ascent, though obviously getting outdone by, I believe, Inzu and not Seth, who was actually second from the bottom on Ascent, doing a much better job here on Haven. Uh, either way, Endeavor will be a spectacular player of expects their agent and force to be reckoned with. They just got to survive through that second half, and they need to close out the defensive round for Caillou. Seemingly may be left to die at this stage. As they need to quickly oh. get some assistance and have somebody else swing alongside them, and it's Seth to do so, which allows for Caillou to get the first pick. Yeah, good exchanges here. A lot of damage on down range, and eventually a sight on... A will be the inevitable plan is what it seems like thus far with that KJ shutdown being employed. But another kill is still warranted in the meantime. St. Clair is not done just yet, but neither is Jack. Because, hey, you're pushing on the side. You got control here. You're in a 3v2. Seth has absolutely no help. But honestly, go ahead. We've seen Jack do a lot worse with a lot less, it seems like. So you never know what could be happening here. But, I mean, oh, this is just, this is just rough. You're just trying to get out here, just trying to survive, do whatever you can. And even then, St. Clair, if they end up losing this round, it's another of these situations I could mention earlier is saying, man, ha, you really invested into this round. You got to make it expensive, make it hurt, do something there. Even if the spike goes off, you got to make sure to find some kills. <sighs> Rupski from down in hell will find themselves their doppelganger, and it will be the Carlton Ravens inevitably in to win out that round, closing that gap well and extending their lead even further st Clair's though they got two ultimates to work with and a third is not actually sorry a fourth is not far behind they also have endeavor that just needs two to do the job but they have the lockdown which means seth's life's going to be of the utmost importance and mzuru has a quick rolling thunder to deny the quick push which then lets them set up that lockdown even faster Considering that the Carlton Ravens' only real push, the only real gap closer, is just placing down a brim stem and then sprinting through a lobby, I feel like the setup for St. Clair should a. be good. It's just a matter of the guns at hand, which seemingly aren't enough, but still enough for a good first blood. And they're thankfully for the Carlton Ravens going <laughs> to move that rifle back through spawn, making sure it's harder to obtain. I mean, you can't blame them. They're going ahead knowing that St. Clair's at a little bit of a deficit for money, even though they're resulting in these first bloods consistently. And honestly, St. Clair, props to him. We've seen it already to where on this defensive side, they're a little bit slow at first, but man, do they start to kick into high gear. And on the attacking side, where they're pretty hesitant during those earlier stages, they really just kind of repeat history once more. But problem is right now is the ultimates that are holding things out over and over and over again. Seth has gotten so many kills in this game. I feel like we could have had five KJ ultimates, but this is only the second that we've seen out of that player specifically, but it doesn't matter. Closing kills again and again. Niner now with one. Deep use is going down, and it's just going to happen. That is another one to work with. Carlton making sure to get themselves 
A darn good lead by two rounds, so not as good as you would expect for your map pick. As St. Clair now moving into the attacking side with their own opportunity to swing. I'll point out, it's not just the fact that it's their map pick. They were on attack. They just arguably yep. the side that should be favored, like you said. This map tends to be a little bit more even than some that you would say, hey, it's three objectives. It should be hugely attacked or favored. It does come down to like a 70-30 or maybe like a 65-35. It is still attacker favorited majority of the time, but not to a huge degree. I would say this is a pretty normal stat line, but the fact of the matter is if yep. Carl and Ravens pick this map, I would expect them to go above and beyond, yep. especially if they're playing a lineup like this. That yep. is the part that's getting me. Not only did they play this map, great job there, Bobby. Love to see that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Love our observer. Uh, I just like to point out occasional mistakes. <laughs> um, when you're playing a composition like this, you that means you're confident, right, Dallas? That means you have something in the back pocket yeah. for your strap book. The fact of the matter is St. Clair Saints have done a wonderful job adapting to that cheeky kind of strategy you're working with, and now they get to move beyond that as they fall to their comfort zone of the attack with a true duelist up at the front lines. Yep. I mean, huge starts already. Good exchanges here on the board, one for one, but that duelist thing you mentioned is going to be huge. And problem is, though, St. Clair's duelist specifically Endeavor hasn't really been a highlight player, hasn't really been going off as much as you expect to. So sure, Ooh. we can get props to that player, but still, St. Clair, it seems like the rest of the squad is the one really fragging out of their minds right now. I mean, St. Clair, yeah, Endeavor hasn't been the highlight player, Dallas, but they have so many highlights around them that the whole team can make up for that, which just lets Endeavor go in and do their job. Your duelist's job is not 100% get killed. It's to close the gap and allow the rest of the team to push forward. That, okay, I don't even know what that second flick was. I'll be pretty honest with you there. That's yeah, the your entire Endeavor. point is just uh, shut down by uh, one man. Oh, man, I, I, it, it sucks to see that. It I mean, sucks. good job, Niner. That was gorgeous. It does. <laughs> you ruined my point. Hey, good job, buddy. You good job. You ruined our, you ruined our job. How does it make you feel? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Either way, yeah. Endeavor, yes, they aren't the highlight player that you expect to be. But neither was Seth on the first map. So I feel like there is wiggle yeah. room for a player to come back into the furway and be a highlight reel. Well, I mean, Seth's wake up was early. I mean, there's a lot of debates that can happen here. And I mean, we can't really just talk about that. Otherwise, we just have a podcast over this game. And we just kind of, it'd be like Tarek, just reacting to it rather than actually commentating over it. Uh, but I mean, that, this is not how the game is really going to go. We get to see that wake up, I mean, almost immediately. First two rounds already off the board considering that it's going to be a force here for Carlson. We're expecting to win this thing out, right? That's going to be number nine with the lack of a duelist and looking at these players and what they're con what they're doing so far. You're expecting them to be looking better and better and better on this hat. They just have to play for the retake, not really play for these holds. But with these guns right now, it's not the biggest deal. But even then, St. Clair, that's what it comes down to. Is not is a player not standing out, but are they being a deficit? Is really what it comes down to. And I'm not, like I said, trying to thrash Endeavor here. Like I said, this player will probably gun me 10 times out of 10 in any lobby. Or nine times out of 10. I'll give myself some credit because I have arms and legs. But um, it's just that you got to make sure to clear that space and have that initiating power behind it. And I don't think the full consecutive push is there. See, not too much utility following there. And even then, an immediate exchange. These points where the team just isn't trusting Endeavor because they're at the bottom. You have to make sure you set this player up no matter what. And they did a pretty good job with that. They got some sight control, but not enough to actually get that spike down. That's rough. St. Clair left. Saints varsity with the limited kit that they had, considering it was still their second round. They didn't win the first. They're coming in with mostly just sheriffs. I still feel like they made a bit of a wave, a big enough wave to use that as a turning point, a brawling point for their team. Because that puts two players who now have the question of what are they going to buy? How are they going to force up? Do they join or do they just go mini sheriffs and play alongside those specters? No matter what the case turns out to be, you're facing rifles. And I would dare say St. Clair Saints are better off on these rifle rounds than they were in that first half where we noticed the buy went forward and it stuck through and true because we saw St. Clair not have, what was it, four players with only half armor, which mm -hmm. made the Phantom a very viable weapon to play against, which led to the third round win and then a very good fourth round, though they did have a recovery. It feels like that kind of trickling statistic could come true again where the inevitability happens. But I love the information that the Carlton Ravens have been gaining. It's very egotistical because they don't have, say, a Soba. They don't have a... Um, I would say a KO for that early intel with Util. They got to jump peek this. Rihanna did it last round on A, and we're seeing that happen here again for Jack over 
already with success when it comes down C. That just sets themselves up and it forces St. Clair to a different side. I mean, you still have their map to work with here, but for St. Clair, once again, it's one of those situations. It's not Endeavor being a problem, but St. Clair is what I mentioned earlier. It's more just to trust the rest of the team inside of Endeavor right now. Are they willing to invest their utility into this player and make sure that they can be the catalyst to kindle the flame on that site? And if everybody else isn't saying, well, if Endeavor isn't fragging out, I could just save that utility for myself. I can set myself up at that point. Let him run in. If he gets a kill, great. Makes my job easier. If he doesn't get a kill, well, then whatever. I'm still doing my own thing. It's that lack of confidence in your teammates that's really going to put you in a massive deficit here. So we have to see this kind of retaliation. We have to see this coordination. We have to see this team stepping into high gear and a very clean first blood coming out for them can start to be the, kind of a little bit of a rolling factor for that. Good trades are to be playing off of, but you'd want to make sure to keep the majority of your guns. If you lose one more player, that entire window's gone. Rubski, what an interesting play alongside the remnants of that brimstim. Sets there themselves up. They ran out of ammo for the second kill, and that would be all she wrote. A St. Clair Saints. Despite the fact that we saw Crawl the Ravens put up a very strong front, a bit greedy, but I think that's the playstyle you need when you're still on that essentially thrifty force five from round two. Play to your strengths, and they did well. They dropped two weapons, but St. Clair's hold on to three, which still puts them in a good spot to yep. buy up for this one. They have all rifles, and this is truly where the game will get to where it needs to be. Carlton Ravens, one point away, one round win away from that uh, checkpoint or chokehold, we like to call of double digits. And I think St. Clair Saints varsity team is a team that's not going to let it be a checkpoint. They'll at least make it difficult if they can even manage to, you know, surmount that Find comeback. You. But I feel like they're a team very capable. Hot tossed over the top and a rolling thunder popped alongside the cosmic divide. St. Clair Saints investing a lot into this round. And why not? You've got the ultimates. Why not use them? Yeah, I mean, why not? I'm kind of with you there. Already looking at the score lineup and even then the kind of round and the money that's been invested to a certain extent. I mean, just go ahead and invest those. See if you can get those early kills and say, look, if we win this round and we mentioned the double digit checkpoint chokehold kind of situation, if they don't have any money to buy in the next one, it's probably a checkpoint. Just kind of guarantee. Let's not worry about that. But right here, right now, this world, we start to see St. Clair go crazy. Because keep in mind, they were pretty big force on that defense. And Seth is a sentinel. If you give them control of a spot and you say, look, I want you to make yourself at home right here, right now. I'm going to kick out the lawn chair for you and I need you to get comfy. That's what he's going to do. So when you get yourself a spike plant, well, it's kind of already gone ahead. Dunzo, dinner bell is ringing. Go ahead and just start eating. Keep in mind, Carlton Ravens are opting to save the two rifles that are remaining, but that still gives a flawless quotation marks around it for St. Clair St. side. Everyone maintains onto the rifles at hand. But I will mention, they essentially went credits for ults, right? Instead of engaging yeah. in an even fight with just rifles and hands and losing a couple players, they opted to engage with ultimates instead and use it after the latter half where Seth popped their lockdown as well. And you know, even off the back of that, with four tapping popping their ult, they now have three pips because they picked up so much in that round that just gave St. Clair Saints the side. So instead of losing guns, they lose ultimates. And I think that's a trade that they're very happy with because the way their ultimates are currently shaking out. They're going to play them even. A couple here and there, they do not mind. They just need a way back into this game. And that is a perfect way to do it. But Carlton Ravens, despite being a little slow on charging their ultimates, I'd say, in this second half, they have ultimates now on the board. Nine is closing in on theirs. You do have the br the breach one open and available for Rolling Thunder. That is a perfect way to retake an objective or slow down an objective push from St. Clair's. And that's all Carlton's waiting for. Sitting spawn, invest wherever you can. A is the smallest site of the three. So, I mean, or the, at least the most open and smallest. It's the best option for Rolling Thunder is what I'm trying to get at because I know those stats don't exactly match up. B is the smallest. A is not really the most open i believe it may be c but i mean all things considered it's gonna be your best option for that you sit right there inside connect you pop your button and then boom what do you know everybody's stunned and you just run right into sight so you're just playing for this retake wait it out you got the first blood st Clair lost her duelist you're saying sweet endeavor's dead who we have to worry about <laughs> seth is still alive but you just can't give him that sight control to really just go crazy you, unfortunately, or Caillou, unfortunately, not finding the right spot for the haunt. It gets thrown a little bit too far back. Seth bites the bullet, literally, as well as standing in a bit of a toxic oh, snake bite. And okay. That caused a bit of a prop. We're only Thunder Pop hey. early here, Dallas. I think it may still be around wind, though. I mean, look at that. 10 it seconds, you're heading back. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's good left. spots. We never know. I mean, there is five seconds. Everybody could say 
Swing and throw the round in five, four, but I don't think that's gonna happen. You don't have enough players on site to even do that, but all things considered, a good play for Carlton there. You honestly didn't really have to invest the Rolling Thunder as you were kind of gonna mention there, but I think it's still kind of worth noting that it's a good play. I mean, a Rolling Thunder, every team has to respect it. And even then they are all stuck inside long and you're stunned at that point, slow walking, you might as well go ahead and, you know, find the nearest contract to sign your death sentence because that is exactly what's going to happen. So might as well hold on to those guns, see what you can do in a round like this and hold on to your money for a little bit because, I mean, keep in mind St. Clair, even then after losing a round like that where they held on to their stuff, four tapping with 5K, Caillou with 4,500, like their money is still actually in an advantageous spot. I mean, you can basically assume that St. Clair Saints' spider senses were tingling there. They knew that Rolling Thunder was bound to come, and once it did, there is no point engaging past that point. They're already down two. They're just not in a good enough spot to really put up a strong front, and because of that, they just kind of let it trickle from there. Niner swings out, takes down one. Caillou just going to refrag back, but that only sets up Endeavor. Finally being allowed to, I guess, feast on that A side as Carlton just was not aware that there'd be two players. You do realize it's a double front to push end of the a side much like you also have a double pronged push a is interesting that way attacking wise you push from the same exact route south defending wise you push from north you gotta watch both angles and it just wasn't there now endeavor with a third in the round just one player left standing in their line will be forfeited just as quick as they try to move in through lobby and four tapping is there what a round from St. Clair Saints to, I guess, clap back after the somewhat, uh, I guess, egregious round before. Can't really blame them too much, but that is a very solid way to come back into it. Yeah, I mean, good lookings for them so far. I mean, St. Clair, this is where the game gets a little bit, uh, uh oh, stinky. It's like those points we talked about it earlier the choke, hold, checkpoint kind of situation. You're looking at 10 rounds. Carlton Ravens have been sitting here for. I mean, not forever. Sure, they just got that round, but they lost it right afterwards. It usually, it's one of those things where you kind of cross it with flying colors or you trip right at the foot of it. It's almost like the finish line of a race to where once you get to that point, you're just kind of like, you know, you're changing things out. It's the whole kind of winning ceremony. You get your medal, you drive home, just kind of carry on with things. But if you trip and beat your face right there, you're getting sent to the hospital. I mean, it's just a completely different rest of the day that starts to follow afterwards. And you can already see it once again unfolding here. Carlton doesn't really have the best buys. They're going for somewhat of a thrifty round. Not really going to happen too much. And have the best success for them, considering they've already lost two players. And they haven't traded one singular individual out for that. You talk about like a race, like a marathon. You can't run 90% of it and then hop in your truck and drive the last bits just because, uh, you know, it's it's easier to do. I don't that, really right? you're gonna feel get like it. Yeah, you're going to get caught, right? It's happened before. It's been on the news. You're going to get caught. It's very obvious. <laughs> I've Carlton never Ravens, heard They're of getting that. caught with their pants down. You've never heard that before? No, it's keep happened. going, People though. I'm, that's funny. I'll look it up later. Yeah, you should Google it. There, there, was a, there was a woman caught, like, I think eight years ago doing that. It happens all the time. <laughs> Um, they, it's very interesting how much the crowd gets together to call it out, too. <laughs> they take marathons very seriously. And Carlton Ravens can start picking up the pace here, get the weights out of their boots. They're not running very fast, but St. Clair are. Quickly onto that C site, a total change pace up from that initial spawn kind of attacker sided orientation where they're just holding in baiting for time they now have all five remaining and it is just nine or the stinger in their hand i bet you nine will still manage to squeak yeah. out one kill here just because it's a stinger you expect it and no wow four tapping oh, barely cursed surviving it. that and nine will fall a flawless round for st Clair. and that's the ninth going in there you had the money to work with keep in mind carlton ravens if they end up losing this round how much money do they have for the next one well <laughs> You know where the open air is? You know what I just said there? Absolutely nothing, because that's how much money they're going to have. They're going to be absolutely broke and can't really have too much of an effort there. And sure, they're coming up on ultimates here. Look at Jack. Only one off from that Viper's Pit. That is good looking. I'm sure if Jack gets that initial pick and is looking for someone to retake on a site, especially if it's towards A, I mean, you're going to see that popped immediately just to try and secure this round. Problem is, if you can pick that player off, because, I mean, the KJ shut down, the Nightfall, it's all really good for retakes. You need to be pushing into spawns. You don't need to be pushing just for sites. Our observers pointed this out. I guess I'll point it out to all of you, too. The FOV indicators on our map are a little messed up. So, as you can see, St. Clair Saints apparently have 24-7 sight lines on C-Long. Uh, just ignore that. Not sure what's happening. Valorant is a uh, AAA title. Probably the best eSport title we have in terms of cleanliness besides maybe Rocket League, which is just, to be fair, Rocket League is like a perfect eSport. Uh, even if I'm not the hugest fan of it personally, it is an amazing eSport. Um, it's hard to mess up car soccer. <laughs> 
Either way, St. Clair Saints, they're on that A side. They collect the ult orb before they go for that spike placement. They want to make sure they get all the chances possible to completely deny. And they'll go for spike as well, which means Seth will get that lockdown available. The retake potential is here. Yes, Carlton Ravens oh. have a, a better post denial with the Molly and the Toxic Snake Bite and all things in between. But besides that, they're doing much better. Brim of the Stim goes down. Lockdown oh. will be popped for both sides. Great counterplay, but it looks like Carlton Ravens actually just want to go off the back of it. They're going to try to engage first and foremost. Four tap and deny the it. lockdown. That may just be it. That is a wonderful way for the St. Clair side to guarantee a 10 10. It's going to come straight down to gun engagements on site, and the toxic screen doesn't give your team the best of chances to actually go for kills. Rubski drops from heaven, takes down Mzuwu. There goes the Nano Swarm. You have to sit with it. Nope. It's not going to happen. Seth will get the kill under Rubski, and there's Sports Happen waiting in spot. Crap! Nowhere to go with St. Clair! Oh my god, what a round to tie things up 10 10. That flank was everything plus some. I mean, you had the entire confidence of the team. Everything relied in that round. Just exclude those finale kills and just go ahead and put the cherry on top. Everything leading up to that point came down to four tapping. It was an instantaneous call. Or the rotation there. You were hoping that the confidence was fading away, and Carlton knew that so much was riding on that round that they had to rotate immediately. Otherwise, everything was going to fall in between their fingers and they were going to blame themselves. But four tapping took advantage of that, went on the flank for the KJ shutdown, and you're saying you wait till the last second to shut that thing down because they're going to push us. And when they know we're not going to be detained, they're going to be getting led inside their head. But it's already seen we're getting some of that right there inside A main because St. Clair is actually fighting but losing the opportunity given to him that's rough not where you want to be and honestly i'd leave Steph here you don't want to let them get these rifles for free but i think it's too little too late now they've already obtained them and carlton ravens who the only downside to this round was the fact that they didn't have proper weapons they forced in the round before you said they keep doing that they're going to run into a problem of never having enough eco if it just constantly trickling in favor of the opposing side bait and switch there with the cosmic smoke they also went for a bit of a, a pull i'm not sure exactly why but it is Cute. what it is and St. Clair Saints will still be a man down, and Seth is extremely low as they re-engage to the A side. They're bound to know that there is, in fact, two players here. Ivano almost lost their head there from Endeavor, but they'll quickly go for the eruption to try and keep them at bay. And that should be the kind of the signal call for St. Clair to say, we either push here or we die. Left. There is no other choice. We know the Vi Viper's pit is out. We know there is a chance for them to re-engage. We have to win these fights, and they just couldn't do it. And Steph, with such little Ooh. HP, Rayano pre-fires that angle, and the shot through the box gets the kill. Yeah, kind of a 3rd round underway, but, I mean, you see the Jack still kind of has that stinger, not really holding on to it. So... I would classify it as that. Good looking there for Carlton. Finally able to go ahead and seven find themselves around after three strung together for St. Clair to hit that kind of 10-10 tie. That was the round right there if you were going to win the game. Quite plain and simple for St. Clair. I mean, you sure had a couple ultimate investments. Jack specifically with that Viper's Pit playing over towards the seaside. But Jack isn't a Viper that really relies on the Viper's Pit. It's more just kind of an actual accessory. It's like a watch for an outfit. It looks good and kind of matches every now and then. But... It's not really a necessity. It's not something that you're relying on. And honestly, I mean, Jack, considering the kind of player that they are and seeing the frags come out so consistently from the guns in the player's hands, is that, I mean, honestly, you just can't go where they are. And right now you're pushing the seaside. You see that Viper's orb and you're like, hmm, I don't know if that's the best idea. So let's go ahead and see if we just get a wrap around. Maybe get some garage control and then maybe push towards B. Instead, it seems like they're going to lap her all the way around to A and they're going to have a brimstone wedding for him. Man, they're even tripping me up. I thought they're gonna go. Hey, they don't know where they're going. I don't know where they're going. Look at the spike. Let's go somewhere it's eventually. It's see long. We'll plan it. I mean, hopefully. <laughs> I'm done. Spike's been in Cubby though for quite a while. Let's let, let's let's be let's be fair here. Spike has been here, so yeah. You got to till down you at to least to allow for them to escape. Even Astro, so I guess anything can happen. It can place that from anywhere. The Nebulous were cross map, kind of like that Omen play as well. A little bit more util to be placed though at one time instead of just that single See. smoke. Either way, it is St. Clair decisively finding kills. Yeah, they lose two, but they gain three. And they were already at a man advantage going into this engagement on site. It's just the player of Riv season left standing. And I don't know if this is the time or the place. It may not be his season. This may be he may be a summer kind of guy, and he's just kind of stuck in a a bit of a winter rut. This is a 3v1 on a site that's very difficult to retake. If there's A, no, even then, you need two players to properly retake A. The reason why it's the most retake is it's impossible. It's, it's two. It's just 
Dude, if it's the of season falls, Caillou gets the kill. <laughs> Just say it sucks yeah. to have to retake that. I mean, there's yeah. no real kind of way to sugarcoat it. B, you have angles. You can play ring around the rosy. Kind of get somebody tripping over their shoelaces. A, you get closer angles. You know, kind of can hear those footsteps. Angles are a little bit more predictable. But when it comes around to C, well, you see the result. Uh, now looking at this, you see the result once more to where St. Clair. Look at this money, man. I just, I don't get it. I don't know what stocks they've been investing in, but they seem to always have money. It's a crazy, think of that one unemployed friend that goes on all these crazy wildlife adventures and you're like, you have no money, man. How are you doing this? St. Clair, just kind of being that guy, being Hemothy, and just able to go ahead and always keep that money up, always keep the buys inside the game. And even then when you're saying, look, Carlton, we've gotten here. We had a good lead earlier. Things were going our direction. It seems that the tides are finally starting to you know, push against you. Well, currents in the ocean, they go both ways, Dallas. That's why at certain times of the day, you're not really supposed to swim in the ocean as the tide is actually pulling more than it's pushing towards the shore. Something like that. That's why they have those flags on the beach. They're there. like, hey, you don't go in the water this night. It's whatever. By the way, I'm colorblind. I can't. Those things are always flags. red. Anyway. I thought it was just everybody telling on the beach that Dallas is a red flag. Don't talk to this man. <laughs> That's probably accurate. I did warn them ahead of time every time I knew you were heading down to the beach, but. I don't know. I can't tell the distance flags. I'm colorblind anyways. But I do know that they do stand for something. And right now, the waves are telling the Carlton Ravens that there is danger aplenty. Four left. tapping, finding two. Rift Season should have found them first and foremost. And not only does four tapping get the kill, but they take nearly no damage in the process. Meaning, they're still... Plenty preened to now move in towards Garage, where Jack Lurf is currently lying in wait. Looking the other way, it could be swung, and there it is. This Ooh. looks like a flawless round for St. Clair Saints. Yeah, Rolling Thunder is available, but it is too little too late for tapping to the 4K. St. Clair may just end this right here, right now. The last buy round here for Carlton Ravens. And it's not even that good of a buy round when your top frag cannot buy full armor. And rib season can't even buy a vandal. Yeah, this, this sucks. This sucks. I'm not gonna lie. Then there's no way to sugarcoat it. Uh, I mean, there's just, and I'm not gonna put salt there either. It's just like just leave it as it is. This this is rough. And I mean, we are expecting Carlton. They had their opportunity earlier. Keep in mind when they were the first one to cross that 10 round threshold, they had a round where things weren't really looking too good for them. They had the advantage behind it. But St. Clair again and again and again, as I mentioned earlier, they always have money. It's maybe why they have such a beautiful facility, I'll admit. You gotta give them credit there as well. That may be kind of somewhat of a key to success. Because, man, that place is gorgeous. But regardless, though, what isn't gorgeous is at least a number so far. Already some good trades going down. Even then, better yet, almost completely even exchanges. Not just in terms of the kills, but in terms of damage as well being done to a player. Both two of them a half, but switch ups. Ultimate's rolling out. Niner, you gotta swing this and really make it worth it. Niner is at least able to get one. Four tapping is off the board. But not able to find the second player that was lying in wait. Flashes galore. This could be a great spot for Carlton Ravens. In fact, it is. Rayano deals with Seth. It's just Mzuwu. Two players down low. This is an obtainable round. This is still applicable. Because of the damage that's been dealt to the two out of the three remaining players. Unfortunately, uh. that major play tossed out by Rayano denies majority peak as Switching they're stunned and concussed and can't get enough time. shots out. Overtime is guaranteed. And now it is a true untrue battle of attrition the first team to pick up. Well, I guess one and one in a row. It is infinite OT, so maybe you have to find three in a row if you have to make that full comeback. Do we have a term for that? I know this is supposed to be not my job and I'm supposed to know this, but like, do we go by tennis terms saying like back to back? Or is it more just like two in a row? There may be, there's gotta be like a tennis term for it too. Cause it's not, like, I was gonna say two in a row, but it's not. Cause if you lose the first, then you have to do three in a row, right? Like you have to catch back up. Uh, just just one by two. Let me go ahead and just we'll, we'll say that one by two is really what it comes down to. Regardless, though, uh, talking about Saint Clair and the people that always have money, it's inevitable for everybody to always have money here, and that's going to be probably key to success. It comes down once again to buys, 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 and ultimate economy has been pretty good. I gotta say, I've liked the allocation of the ultimates. I've liked how they haven't been over invested. They've been kind of spread out. These teams have warrants behind it. Every single time I've seen an ultimate happen. I'm like, you know what? I understand that. I, I've never really been left questioning any of these decisions these teams are making. 
But the biggest thing that I'm looking at right now is Carlton being back on the attacking side. I want to see what they can do with it. And sure, Endeavor kind of getting a little bit over antsy. Still trying to get accustomed to being on the defense again where you can't overextend. And Caillou is there to go ahead and say, you know what? It's all right, buddy. I'm here to trade you out at least. Caillou is in a very bad spot, though. Maybe be playing to die. Thank oh you. gets another kill in the process. Hot comes what? over the top, and that sets things up. What? Wow, St. So okay. Clair bowling in an air strike by Caillou. Wonderful assistance by four tapping up in heaven. Unfortunately, Seth tries to go for an ego swing down short, and Rubski gets the better end of that engagement. Does drop them a little bit lower, but most of the damage has been done to the St. Clair side. Looks like a... Like almost an exact repeat left. of what we saw just last round that led into OT Dallas of two players low and one at full HP and a single player on the attack trying to retake and just, I guess, control this round. But it wasn't really possible before. <laughs> it may be the exact same scenario here. Four tap and we'll swing up towards heaven. This spike is locked down. Wonderful play by Rubski as Mzu is just not able to find the impact they need, but there's Caillou. I thought they were playing to die, but they survived and thrived. Three Match kills, point. and now St. Clair just need to win one more. I think Caillou was playing to die, but I mean, reinforcements were fast as 911 right there. then and there. I mean, it was perfect. The answer from the rest of the team, you can tell that they're working off of each other. And even then, like I mentioned earlier, Endeavor not really having the most spectacular performance. Making sure to definitely even things out, I'll say. Now going towards the end of this game, sitting at 15-17, not terrible, but you're still kind of sitting at the bottom when you can look at Seth or tapping. I mean, Caillou, every single one of those players, they have been disgusting in their own right. And you just got to say thank you for taking the reins on this one because, man, it hasn't been the best of days so far, but, man, we're going to keep it going along. Or maybe it's just the defensive side of the map considering that, I mean, both these times, the defense has absolutely run through these attackers just right off the get-go. I think it's about positioning. They're not playing the same exact way they did before. Because, I mean, it has been an attacker favorite in map throughout this game. So, change things up. Obviously, it wasn't working previously. Try to be a little bit different, I would say. Either way, it's worked out for the Carlton Ravens. Same thing there with St. Clair. And it will net themselves now an even spot where this is where the Carlton Ravens can win the next two. And we'll count it for that three in a row. They have to have it winning by two. But we're evened up again in the next round of OT. We'll inevitably... I guess continue onwards a little bit longer. What's the longest OT I think we've seen here for the NEC? Wasn't it like eight full rounds of OT, seven full rounds of OT? I think we did it as well. Yeah, I, I want to say we did. I, I couldn't tell you, though. A lot of people are usually proud of those moments. I see it's like PTSD. I just kind of lock it away. Um, <laughs> I keep that locked in my memory. I literally you know, like, I, I, I know Groundhog Day was a couple days ago. Like, that's what it feels yeah. like. You're just waking up the cycle repeats, and there's Big nothing you can do to fight it. It's just that the, yeah. the will of someone else. But, I think uh, the worst part about that game was that it was the same thing every round, too. There was, like, yeah. no variation of the strategy. It was like, literally it's, like it's, Bill Murray walking it's little, the street. Yeah, it's everything. little things here and there to remember about it, but the entire memory itself is locked away because we're not trying to bring it back up again. But, I, I mean, these teams are already switching things up. We're not going to have that problem here so far. I mean, Carlton able to go ahead and once again feel the aggression. That's the biggest holdback in a lot of these overtime rounds. This team start to get scared. They're saying, oh, my God, that's an all-or-nothing kind of situation. Like, well, it definitely is. Doesn't mean you have to treat it any differently from another round. The more hesitant you on that attacking side, the easier the kills become. You can already see that kind of being warranted here, right here, right now. But a 4v3 situation, going for the retake on the site for C. You see these players from St. Clair trying to flood in, and they really have to get the job done. Endeavor, aggressive swing, and a very important one at that. Takes down Jack Moore. Oh. Robski is now forced to step away from Cubby, and we can take it down to the process. Does only 60 damage to take when you're down to 54 HP. you got to get out of there fast, and that just was not going to happen. There's the round one by St. Clair's defense. What a round to win as well. Retake, too. Honestly, I think the retake was almost inevitable. There's the yep. Rolling Thunder. They, they charged it, but you can't Switching it, it was almost inevitable when they Match tried to point. plant at that corner of platform, and they killed them through this cloud that yep. was placed at Defender Spawn. What a great pre-fire. That dropped things from a 5v3 to a 4v3 and allowed for St. Clair to push out successfully. Give up placement. That's fine. But then you can engage safely. And the one player who should have been there to deny that was the flanking player from Carlton Ravens. They weren't flanking fast enough. And you got plenty of util to clear Covey. You're not holding long. That is a rough way to go about it. And even then, I mean, you made it almost a 3v3 at that point because keep in mind the top fragger of the team, or not the top fragger, but pretty darn close, Jack, was the one who went for that plant. So you're saying, I don't know who it is. I don't care. But, I mean, the numbers are evened up right now. If we push in this exact instance, that's going to be one less piece of utility being flooded our way to actually create a halt on us. So you can see that confidence, once again, kind of being in the same exact situation here from St. Clair. They have an opportunity to take this game, 
buy the gropes and just absolutely run with it. And honestly, you can't blame them with the way they're playing this game. They're still going a little bit slower, but they're not doing it so precariously as it just as a coordinated push together. They're playing the default. They're saying, Carlton, are they going to get desperate? Oh, nope. Okay, then. Let's still try to get something going here. Let's try to see where a push may be coming out. What's the one place we haven't checked yet? See long Let's take attendance there. Oh, there's a player. It's Rimson. He missed. Thank God. Let's go ahead and flash the man out. Knock him out in the 5v4. Oh. Yeah, you're, that is, that, we talked about playing to die for Niner previously. That is playing to die. Yep. You are going to die there. This it is, is an inevitable you. potential. If there's more than one player for St. Clair going to swing that angle, you are dead. They will have the util and the player to swing after the fact. They'll open up for themselves. It is the worst case scenario. Niner, though, I mentioned them just for a second. They'll go in through short. Oh, oh and they're playing this perfectly. Look at the time being bought. They try to oh, down. No! And oh, my goodness. No. And the same fell swoop. Two fall on sight. Jack Lorf, the last one standing, knocks down four tapping. But there is little to no time. Spike, Spike will go down, giving you a bit more time to work with. But you have to retake sight and kill all three opponents at the same exact time. One way planted, it's just a cloud burst. Doesn't last that long, but it does allow for them to transition. Jack Lorf, I oh! make it just barely. A nano swarm as well. How do you get out of this? A turret placed on top. They're ready to swing. Seth is trying to bait it. They get the intel, they'll spray through crate. Jack Lorf, I'm sorry to break it to you. You've got him. Go out with a bang, and there it is. Endeavor to secure, and 15 to 13. Oh. <laughs> the St. Clair side. What a match they take it to. Oh. So this is, I, especially if anybody's in this situation, I feel bad for Jack because, I mean, considering the kind of standing they had in the entirety of the series, you kind of want to root for him a little bit. Be like, man, I just want you to go out with a bang, feel good, and just go ahead and pray and say, well, I did my job. You did. I'll give you credit. That last situation was very, very just... difficult. You aren't winning that by any stretch of the imagination. I'm sorry, but it's just like when everything's on the line, I mean, you look at St. Clair and what they've done. I mean, they stepped it up here today. We saw it initially. Carlton, after a very, very strong start, a little bit of halt there towards that half starting to roll around. And ever since then, St. Clair said, look, I mean, seven to five and a half for their selection? <laughs> this is free pickings. I'm just still hung yeah, up I'm on with Niner you. there. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm hung up on Niner there. And Niner, I, I get it. Everyone wants that clip. Everyone wants that moment of, of trigger discipline, of watching the player pass, moving out, taking down two, turning and taking the one down on shorts. But the problem was if you had just walked with Seth down short ramp, killed him there, then your team wouldn't have had to worry about that crossfire. The only angle they would have had to be concerned about was long. And your team has done a wonderful job of securing long the whole game. To be brutally honest, Carlton's long hold was very good. They jump peaked very well, despite having pretty good intel agents on their team. They were finding a lot of egotistical information, which was very important for that map in general. Both teams are doing a wonderful job of that. They were able to secure defensively multiple times, but when you don't give your team the best footing to work from, it starts to get difficult. That happened on seed. Yeah. That happened on cubby positions multiple times. That happened on retakes. It's one of those things that you can look back on it and go above and beyond it. It's only week one, guys. There's still yeah. so much more to go in the season. Honestly, I think it's better to have a single loss at the beginning of the year, go flawless the rest of the year, and then us Cassidy's, because they must have been real mad yeah. after that first loss. They went completely flawless the rest of the season, and then it's just say, like, oh, they just beat everybody in their division, right? Like, I think I think even with a little bit of a mar in your record, you guys are a very good team. I don't know if the agent selection is necessarily what I would like on that map because it just puts you in a rough end on the other side of it. Yeah, and I mean, keep in mind still, I mean, these two teams, as you mentioned here for the start of the season, this is their own kind of division now. It's their own region as well. I mean, so I feel like these two are going to be top contenders for that. So when it comes around to the postseason, they're not going to have a problem. I think what it comes down to more importantly is just kind of ironing things out, especially, I mean, just kind of, we didn't get a chance to break, break out the entirety of the roster, kind of go over the majors and whatnot. But I'll just tell you right here, right now, for the side of St. Clair, every single one of these players are freshmen. Yeah. They, got, they don't have a bunch of growth just in terms of their own team, but they have time, what feels like essentially forever, to get things nailed out. And for them to already be inside this division and performing like this, winning out this first game, Carlton, I'm not saying the pressure's on you. I mean, there is a very easy second place a slot within this division. But it is just, man, they, this is a team to beat already to tell you that they – Sure, their ascent looks a little bit iffy, but man, the cojones you got to have to choose that thing right off the get-go, 
let's go ahead and lock that one out. Plays just straight specialty maps. If you know if a team is that much of a good gunner, I mean, that kind of creates a little bit of leeway for a lot more teams to say, maybe we can play this around a little bit more so. But, I mean, you also got to look at St. Clair and somehow find a way to say, how can we break their money? Because I don't know what it is, but they got all of it in the world. Whether it be real life, in-game, with their facility, with their weapon buys, whatever it need be, they apparently have all of it at their disposal. And that's the first thing you get to rob away. Otherwise, they're just going to be able to play the game and do well with it. Yeah, I mean, Seth didn't have the most glorious game in a sense, right? They were second to bottom fragger for right. pretty much the whole game, if not bottom for a couple rounds. That's right. They had the most spectacular start to Haven that you can possibly ask for. Besides, we've seen a couple on Breeze before, but that's Breeze is gone. We try not to remember that one. We'd cry if we did. Um, R.I.P. Breeze. Seth has the best start you can ask for. And yeah, Seth fell off towards the end, but it was more like an exponential curve. Seth falls mm -hmm. down a little bit, but that allowed four tapper to rise, right? Yeah. That's what you need. When one player starts to fall off, the other one step into that. And they ended very close to each other on that scoreboard. There's a reason for that. Seth allowed the team to get comfortable on the map. They allowed the team to say, hey, these are the few rut rounds we're going to get. We're catching up, and that second half is where we're going to thrive, and that's exactly what happened. We highlighted Endeavor. We thought that was going to be a player that really stepped up into the game. They did do a wonderful job of filling that position. They were a little uncomfortable with it for the first few rounds, those first few attack around jitters, and yeah, we maybe talked a little bit more about them than we should have, but they did a wonderful job, especially in OT. They had one round where they took three kills. They did a glorious job of taking advantage of those sites. That is what you need to see. Trust those players, which was the biggest highlight we were trying to talk about. You have to trust those yeah. players. They trusted Seth a lot. Once Seth started to fall back, they trusted everybody else. And that's where the rest of the team started to climb a little bit closer, not having to rely on the shoulders of Seth, who, to be frank, this was a BO5. That backpacking play style is not going to work. Nope. That player is going to tire out. They are going to go I'm out. For a young team like this, Sub. That is, that is, it is a literal battle of attrition. They will be gasping for air at the end of it. Yeah, and even then more so, think about, I mean, the placements. Think about not only just these teams in the brackets and the bigger picture of the league. Think about it on a game-to-game -game basis. Look at which teams and which players are starting to pop off there. You mentioned it. A player finally stepping up. Seth, who's a KJ, played that role both games. You're thinking, well, what can a KJ do? Quite simply, almost nothing. With, I mean, her utility, it doesn't help her swing. It doesn't help her set up a kind of play or anything. It helps her hold down a sight. On defense, that's already a problem in itself. Run. Get away from that. Plain and simple. Or, I'm telling you for a retake, that's where, oh, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. You shouldn't have given up sight because once you let a KJ once again kind of pitch up tent, make themselves at home somewhere, they become that much of a problem. So, thinking about these kind of players, these agents, what their compatibility is with the map, the kind of stages of the match they take place in with the defaults at the start, the actual combat of a mid-round, or the post-plant retake that comes about. Think about the impact of those each phase of a round and whether or not which player step up in those scenarios and who you need to be picking off and how that sets up the rest of the round. Because that's something that's ignored a lot in this Champions Division. is going to be the big difference maker between a, a first place and a second place, especially when it comes around to concluding. Target acquisition, proper target acquisition is huge. Lower ranks, you got to worry about crosshair placements, you know, timing for pushes and everything in between. Champions, you've almost ironed out the majority of those. You have the occasional round that squeaks through because uh, not being disciplined enough or something like that, but target prioritization is very important. So a couple of rounds go the other way on a sense specifically, and Haven, it was anyone's game up to the end. OT is, is such a difficult place to go from. Either way, it is rough to start a season on stream. Yes, you get to be the very first stream back for the NECC for this semester. Congratulations again, St. Clair. But you're also going to get broad reviewed by everyone here, and they're going to realize, hey, shut down Seth, shut down Ford Tapper on Haven. Don't pick Haven. They have a lot of weaknesses on Ascent. You guys got to broad review your game. Got to be ready. Got to be prepped, and we'll give you guys plenty of time to do so. We'll see you guys in the next match. Me and Dallas are going to be hopping on out here, but we got another great coming game coming up right after this. We'll see you guys when that one's ready to get underway.
Welcome here, everyone. We are excited to finally get this last match underway. I'm excited to be here once again with the NECC, and with me is the ever so lovely Hail Monkey Man. We will be bringing you the final broadcast or the final match here this evening on this lovely week number one. This Monday has been jam packed with action. I understand there was a reschedule earlier on, but you know, we're okay with that. There's been so much action across the NECC one channel and the NECC two. If you have not seen that, I believe right now there's another match going on. But that's not what you're here for. Right now, you are here to see Boise State versus UBC Black take each other on in the Champions Division. Hail Monkey Man, are you ready for this? You know what? I can't be any more ready. It's week number one. This is when you set that pace of competition. You said, hey, you know what? Winter break. Got to go home. Be able to uh, eat some good food from mom and dad. And now you're ready to hit the sticks. Be able to get the mouse with the clicks. And be able to click some heads out there. We saw a map that went the distance, I think, into like double overtime into that second map. But ultimately, ended up being a 2-0. This one has the makings of maybe being somewhat the same way. We were talking about in the green room between yourself and I, Orbital, that both these teams look pretty good. This is a Boise State squad that could be even better, but the spread of the maps that we're going to be seeing today, it's going to be depictive of our first one, I think, about how much momentum both these teams really get. Oh yeah, we had Split and Lotus band away very quickly on, uh, and then we picked up Fracture and Haven, and then uh, the band away of Ascent and Pearl, and of course Icebox being the decider, so very nice spread here of new and old, and I, and I really, really do enjoy that, right? I'm very excited to see it, and hopefully we get to see even uh, more craziness, because I mean, Lotus, to me, is a lot of fun, it's chaotic, it's crazy, and that's what I love. I, I hate standard, right? I hate standard <laughs> of, we know what's going to happen, we know how it's going to break down. I love the crazy. I love the revolving door where, you know, you got to push the button and hope that you can save your teammate or something like that. It's crazy and it's frenetic. But right now, nobody wants to play it. So Fracture, Haven, and Icebox will be our three go-to maps. Lotus has been one of those maps that's playing with like your friends has been really enjoyable to kind of get into and see like, okay, let's see if I can be able to trick someone. And uh, apparently a lot of uh, uh, peeps in my inner circle love to play Yoru, go and click the doors <laughs> and move between stuff. So of course that gets a little bit weird. I know oh, uh, describing man. my friends as Yoru main <laughs> starts to become a little bit sussy baka, but this one is going to be moving over into fracture first. Now, I mean, Orbital, when we look at Fracture from like a kind of a thousand foot view, there was a lot of disdain to change. I mean, same as being, you know, was said of Pearl and now to Lotus. Fracture has had some learning curves and people have started to like it, especially because of the changes for some of those entry points, especially, you know, I, I like going to B on the backside of Arcade. Yeah, it's, uh, it's opened up a lot more opportunities, right? I, I feel like all the most recent maps have been very handedly one way or another and then they quickly fine tune it about a week or two later like oh sorry 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 now it's more even for you right now we made an actual map and that was definitely one of the more rigid ones right fracture felt very lopsided depending on how you played it it was the first map that really introduce a different style of entry for the attackers and the defenders even to defend against so the fact that it's now become a force default because i because again i still think that it's still you know one of the more dislike maps but it's more what do you hate more it's the lesser of two evils so going in there as you said that b site feels a little bit better on the entry is that actually going to give us a whole lot eh, you know who knows we'll wait and see what they have to say but of course we are going to get underway here you can see the ever so lovely overviews of all the different maps that we might be playing on but, you know, it's only one for right now. It is going to be Fracture giving us the ever so glorious moment. And you can see the amazing Aegis that have been selected. A little bit heavy handed there. We see the neon for Daimyo, which I'm very excited about. That, okay, so I had to play against this. Uh, may maybe my lower <laughs> ranks may don't depict what's going to happen in Champion Sphere in this division, but this is a make or break kind of, kind of composition because it's about getting in and ruining with pace. You're going to have the brimstem that's going to give Neon, like somehow they're going to go Mach 5, they may go 88 miles an hour, it may disappear, and then suddenly reappear and boom, there goes your temple. This is also going to be made possible with the double duelist comp with that raise. There is an insane amount of pressure built behind this, and they're going to lock it down behind the Killjoy and the Breach entry as well. Opposite of that, it's a little bit more cerebral with IDK hitting over onto the Cypher, trying to be able to get a little bit smarter. Maybe, I hope they're going to be ready because they're going to have to try and shut things down off of that, uh, that zero point knife as well from the KO. This, this could be a lot to be received on the get-go by UBC. Yeah, this is... <laughs> 
this is this is the I don't want to know what's coming around the corner at a bad moment, <laughs> right? Like I feel yep. like that's what it is. So uh, this is going to be super super fun to see how it's being utilized. And again, these agents coming out here, this is week number one, right? Some of these teams are actually still testing some of them, uh, some of their players, and also testing how they feel together in a competitive setting, right? Yes, from semester to semester, these teams do roll over, but there can be changes, right? There can be movements through these areas. So I'm still very excited to see how these teams do adapt and how they focus on certain aspects, such as individual skill, if they so wish to go for, or if we're going to see that coordination. And we can already see it, right? Boise State on the attack here first, lining up along that top side V. They are going for the full-on gun check. I love it. It's going to be wild to see. So, hey, you know what? Just put a bowling ball of death into B and try to be able to just kind of move in with that extra bit of space. So we do move into round number one. And, of course, Frenzy Gang Assemble. You put that in the hands of a neon. It's just instant death, and that's what we find already as Daimyo <laughs> is going to light up the scoreboard early. Already two down. Drop a dime real quick, pay your dues, and welcome to the Thunderdome. Boise State bringing the pain here. And a quick entry onto that B site, right? They, again, win that hands check hands down. Now, now looking for a bit more. I love that entry so, so quick, though. Boise State not wasting a single second. Sky's going A. Take it away, Hammer. IDK is down, and I noob not willing to go down without a fight. We'll take one before falling on their own. Four left alive for Boise State as they take round one. It was nearly unnecessary. It was, I mean, basically like, unnecessary <laughs> to be able to get that uh, that, that spike down because ultimately they had so much pressure. They broke the lines uh, immediately of the classic hold, but that's kind of what you end up with. That's why there's a, a little bit of disdain because there is almost a pure split when it comes to uh, the defensive side for mm -hmm. uh, Fracture. They have to kind of, you, know, you have to kind of nestle into your little fortress of solitude on each side. And I love the B hut, uh, especially from a Killjoy standpoint, but that's not what they're kind of rocking with. They've got a cipher that's going to be able to get maybe the passive intel. We go to round number two, and they have gone a little bit more south to this north-south uh, kind of expedition, and it does look like it, at least B is their lean, but they're hunting. They're trying to force a bit of that insecurity into the minds of UBC. And I mean, that works. I mean, when you don't have weapons, I think all you feel is fear, right? If all you got are <laughs> pistols, you're like, okay, I don't really want to enter this one. Mm. Hammer, though. Hammer is ready to go, and May have heard a little bit of a click. We'll see if they can identify that, hey, three are around the corner. But it's a straight shot on the A. At this point, it is identified. The 50-50 did not go the way of UBC block. And they will go ahead and get ready for this retake. The rest of Boise State happily scrounging around for any sort of position that they so want. They, they can leisurely do this as well. This is amazing. So just very calmly setting up in all the right corners. This is becoming kind of that big uh, D-Day war of attrition to set up to, to the 5v5, and they're going to be crashing here into a main as they are holding down from the on-box. It is just a classic fest, but you do have IDK that's bouncing through. Oh, they do get just like a tiny dink forward, but otherwise that's going to be j -Bag. It grabs a 3k. So otherwise, this is uh, so far so good on the 2-0. That, that's what your kind of expectation is. Make it as expensive as possible. At least get the shields down. Be able to put some of the better breakage. And, but uh, we go into the buy-up. There's going to be a couple light shields. Phantoms. I, I, I want to know because this one feels like it needs a little bit more of that mid-range movement for kind of your gunplay. Do you, do you favor the Phantom in a comfort yeah. zone over the Vandal? Uh, let, let's just say I prefer my shots not to be heard because they for sure ain't hitting. There. But ah. <laughs> granted, <laughs> granted uh, I do agree. The Phantom is a very nice weapon. It holds down quite well. I think the recoil is slightly better. I want to say the spray pattern. Sorry. Uh, it, it holds a bit better. And again, at that point, I think it really does just come down to preference, right? Between the Vandal and the Phantom. So I will not lean one way or another. All I'm going to say is I really don't want the opponent to know that I am missing my shots. That's all I care about. So we'll go ahead and take a look here. Boise State going to make a rush for it through the back end over satellite into A Ooh. once again. And Pearson was ready. Daimyo goes down. Pearson eats a 2K. IDK follows up with the two pair. j -Bag takes out Pearson. But you need a few more to take it home. Sky is going. Okay, that was fair. That was very, very fair. And now we're looking. Will it be a full house? Or will it just be a two pair with an ace on top? Watches the bounce. Smokes go down. And IDK is looking. And IDK Ooh. gets it. Full house for UBC Black as the opening rounds of Valorant go pretty much standard.
Three kings over my two, uh, cl- uh, my what was it? My two twos. I always come out with that. I just have the worst hand when it comes <laughs> the two to pair? any kind of. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, just like oh, okay, well, you know, three of a kind. Good job on you. But hey, good uh, job. I, I mean, on... that wins pots. Let's be real. <laughs> it does. It, look, anyone expecting me to win anything and I'll, and have a poker face? Look, I I cast for a reason. It's because that money just goes out the window. But right now, what you know, we break into round number three. That one a little bit more consistent. You obviously have IDK that's been able to hold it down they kind of clutch up especially they get the first three kills from you know the first couple kind of fell by the wayside but with more control but this is going to be your steady real gun round again it's more of a b lean you have that split as oh you have a couple but they're going to be putting the lockdown this is the good basement heavy surge i wonder if they're going to be putting the aftershock into the floor to try and clear that out Mm, that would be good. And again, that is one of the changes that came about with some of the util pieces, right? They specifically made it so we can break a little bit easier. But alas, I knew uh, ran to a corner and tried to tuck themselves away because they are currently detained. J Bag getting the plan down. No one dying just yet, except for Hammer. Hammer says, hey, I'll take one away, LD. That's going to be a clean hit. And now, looking at that Rolling Thunder, keeping everyone out of sight. I knew rolls through. Daimyo is going to hold on to another. And right now, UBC Black washing through Boise State. Uh, they have only one remaining inside so three Rihanna, but they're facing a two-man swing, and that's just too many bullets, too fast, too long, and that will be a defuse that does come back through. Hey, and great job kind of reacting off of the ults. You did have the lockdown that hit iNoob, and they had to sit around that corner. The smokes came down, and there was that try for the bolt charge to be able to really kind of get a stun in there, and then hitting with aggression. I like what the Broncos are doing right now, trying to get that full field pressure, especially with the Rolling Thunder, but it was was the retake it was just it's the ebb and flow of that battle from ubc and they didn't really kind of bat an eye they made sure to just kind of keep with it so you're gonna see stingers and did you see about the news of what uh, the stinger adjustment that's coming in on the on the very very near future on the next patch it's it's Ooh. it's gonna ruin everyone loving stingers right now I, I heard about it, but go ahead and update us. I mean, this so, is this feels like it's your area of expertise. I mean, well, it's expertise in me hunting Twitter, and it's basically, <laughs> hey, this thing is going to have some damage fall off from distance, and it's going to be rough. I think it's going to go from, like, 20 to 15, especially Ooh. if you go beyond, like, 15 meters. So it's going to be fairly rough. And same as be said of, I, of Daimyo, as IDK is able to drill them down from the smokes, the plant will occur. But they're losing numbers from the side of Boise State before they're able to really kind of establish holding sites. Ooh. But that one from distance with the sheriff is going to be all DM that's going to be able to get rid of Hammer, and here comes Aww. a Neural Theft. Neural Theft should give away a lot of locations here, and this should be easy. Clean up j Bag though. Hold it down, and Riri said, not today. I knew, though, cleans it up with a 2K at the end, but that was a very expensive round. So again, that was a little bit of a bargain bin for Boise State. The fact that they were able to take three in that feels pretty dang good. Either way, it is three rounds in a row for UBC Black, showing off their veteran status here as returning from the fall season. They laid up, I believe, 6-2 in their previous season, so looking to continue that type of run and hopefully put up good numbers once again. Yeah, and that's, uh, again, that's that's going to be the dynamic that will shift the meta, especially because they're making that uh, Stinger in particular, they're making it more expensive. It's going to go from 950 to 1100 So it's its Ooh. own economy slot now, like 500 below your Spectre. So where it was a great eco, apparently uh, the big love ab above says that's not what we, how we want you to buy that. Fault line is going to come oh. through, and that's a great combination. <laughs> Pearson is getting very aggressive, and all DM takes away the kill joy. That's gonna be that's gonna feel like a joy to them to get that kill. I mean joy or hey one way or another It, it all depends on perspective at that point True. right now great pick though right for the here. first blood Boise State should be Not so happy about that one because now they are corralled on the upper side of the map You can go ahead and take a look They are wondering what the heck they want to do with that KO in place if they go to the speed site They will be locked out of their abilities if they're not careful, right but up in treehouse Re -re said, I got you. I knew peaked one too soon and loses her life. Even things up. Four to four. Rihanna and another one will go down as J Bag is able to grab Pearson. Pearson did have that first blood. It was a great combination, but you know, the dynamic duo will in fact die together as they stay in tower. And now B is basically free. They haven't completely killed Yams, which sounds 
so delicious right now. I've just got into the yam gang. Uh, it's uh, it's just so good. I, I don't know why I never had yams before, but I had it for Christmas and it was delicious. Well, left. it's going to be a final meal. Hopefully they were able to visit everyone on their holidays. It's, it's slow creep, but they're having to work with time and that is not in their back pocket. They got 20 seconds and yams could be able to get off this angle, but no, Ooh. Daimyo is able to make the clear. Some up for dinner, and uh, just like that, B side is completely open. Good plant goes down, and you can see Black working against a 2v4. No ultis in the pocket, very little utility. Hammer working with only a Molly, and I mean, that ain't gonna do too much, right? Too many angles to clear out. IDK working around the same. I mean, what can you really do, right? What can you do except pray that you can grab one or two kills? You get blinded, backed away, and now everyone knows. You're in mid. Good luck with this route. You do trade one for one. And now Hammer. What can you do? Check one. Check two. And Pete Dime, yo, says goodbye. 3-3, to three, Boise State. Bring it back to a tie. Mic check. Mic check. One, two, three. They're hearing themselves. They're hearing me. But they're also seeing as they're trying to get back onto site. And, you know... As soon as the molly popped, it, you saw that aggressive uh, step out from box, and that's just knowing, hey, they got util on hand. Let me just get up into there. So that is, <laughs> we're going to be seeing ourselves into a 3-3 inside the first half of the first half, the first quarter, if you will. We're not guaranteed 24 rounds, but we have, I think this is what, <laughs> our second real rifle round, maybe third, and it's going to be rough for either side. This this kind of a, a loss here does not hard force a reset, but you're going to be seeing light shields on the back end if you don't get a good trade. That's going to be Yams that comes out in force. They're going to go for the flash, and the same to be said from the defense on both sides, and they're just oh trying to clear him out. Orbital Strike gosh. comes down hard. My orbital strike, my namesake decided to drop in and have a little bit of fun, but look at UBC, so this is one of the few times that you see the defenders decide to get aggressive, and all DMs saying, man, we lost out hard on that. Such a beautiful call by UBC Black calling that Boise State were going to try and play it slow, and every so often you got to change it up. This is how you do it on Fracture because of the dynamics of this map. You are allowed to do this. Normally you can pull this off, right? Normally you would not see a rush by the uh, defenders like this. But they made it work. So well done by UBC Black. They make it look easy as well. And now all DM is just chasing around, picks up an ult charge, and that, that's all you can really hope for here. You're just picking up scraps and maybe another kill. Uh, it's, I was wondering.